2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Holy Father, we give you praise and honor, Lord, and your holy Sabbath. Father, God of heaven, the creation of the universe, look out for us, Lord. We move from us all evil thoughts. We move from us the thing that we think that we can have in this captivity that we could not have. But because of our lust, we move that lust for demon on us, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, continue bless our UIC. Continue open the doors. Continue send your angels to guide us and protect us throughout the way. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 Father, heal the sick that is among us. Heal them quickly and speedily. In your son's name, we thank you for the wine, also for the drink. In Christ, we pray for the bread. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Most high Christ bless. Salute down. Face sisters. And to the mothers and daughters of the nation of Israel, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Most high Christ bless you all. Man, I don't know about y'all. We had a good time. Fist of Tabernacle, man. If you was not in uh, uh, Alabama, not Oklahoma, Alabama, I got to get it right. Not Oklahoma, Alabama. I mean, we was up in there doing our thing. You understand? All praise to the most side, man. We got the bishop with us. We, you know what I mean? I don't know how bishop do it, man. That was from 12, that was like 12 hours sitting down every day, sometimes 14 hours. I don't know how you do it. But all praise to the Lord, man. The Lord put the spirit on you. You was doing your thing, Bishop. Yeah, we was teaching from 12 noon to like, like 1, sometime 2 in the morning. All praise to the bullseye. I, mean, I was exhausted. Yes, you got the energy, man. You do see, I mean, you still 100%, Bishop. No, no, no. <laughs> Lord's all praise to the bullseye. Well, all praises. I apologize for being late, brothers and sisters. Traffic hit us. So today we're just going to get it in. Some of y'all going to be happy. Some of y'all going to be mad. But it's all right. Yeah, 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 Bishop, I thought this uh, uh, cap was too slow to drive you. I no, no, was, no, there was traffic. There was there traffic. Was traffic. <laughs> Cap was that Captain Zeph was a good drive. Oh, praise to the most high, oh, man. Right. We're going to talk about when Satan enters in. Satan enters into us. I did a class some time ago, maybe a couple of years ago, that said basically everybody in here, everyone listening, has the potential to becoming a Judas Iscariot whether you agree with that statement or not. Everyone has the potential. We saw 2018 a major setback. It wasn't even a setback because we grew more and more after that. Okay, understand that. Write this down, write this down, write this down. Uh, <clears throat> Satan shakes the foundation of our character to see if what we believe and value is really what we'll stand for. Write that down. I know y'all didn't get it, so I'll just repeat it again. Satan shakes the foundation of our character to see if what we believe and value is really what we'll stand for. We saw in 2018, a lot of brothers and sisters did not stand for what they claimed they believed in. Okay, I'm gonna take you through the scriptures um, beginning with our four parents and show you how they reacted when Satan entered the scene. All right, let's open up with Adam and Eve. I saw uh, 
all the classes from uh, yesterday I saw uh, Deacon Abiel, Deacon Asaf, uh, Deacon Lava. Who came after you? Bishop Kanai. Uh, all the classes were excellent, were great. Um, we're going to start with at Genesis 3. Who's reading for me? I am, Bishop. Okay, let's start at verse 1. Okay. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, when it talks about the serpent being more subtle than any beast of the field, we know it's not talking about a snake. It's talking about the spirit of Satan. When you give me the precept in Corinthians, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 3, thank you. It's not talking about a snake. Like Bishop Kenai said, you will not get this in Sunday school. They don't have the understanding. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I fear less by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Jump over to uh, the part that says even Satan himself. It's right there. Four, 14, 14. Come on, y'all. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's what I wanted, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He did not come down as a snake. Psst, Eve, psst, that's mythology. He came down as an angel of light, beguiled her, tricked her, deceived her. And this is why Paul said, get Galatians chapter 1. This is why he said in verse 8, the book of Galatians, chapter 1 and verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach, enough, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So what's he making reference to about an angel coming down, uh, speaking another gospel? He's talking about Genesis with Adam and Eve. That's what he's talking about. Okay? He didn't come down as no snake. He came down as an angel of light and beguiled her, deceived her. Back to Genesis 3, please. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm -hmm. but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Come on. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So now he comes with lies. You shall not surely die. Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Notice it says gods. Adam was already a god. He was offering Eve the possibility of being equal with her husband. It's the God, we're back in the garden today with the black woman who says, I'm equal to my man, 50-50. This is a partnership. I wasn't made from you. You came from me. It's the same scenario. Very few sisters understand that. Let me tell you men that right now. Very few sisters understand we are replaying the garden. The white man says, you can be a feminist. You can do what you could be the head of the house. She goes, yes, Amasa. And she don't see it's the same thing that Satan did with Eve. It's the same scenario. We don't. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She could be wise based on this wisdom. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. The fruit is talking about a sin. It's not talking about an apple, a pear, or a banana. It's talking about sin. She ate the sin. She broke the law. Go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her. And she taught her husband. When you read Wisdom of Solomon, uh, I believe it's chapter 14, it tells you, give me that real quick, because some of you may be new. You may not know what, what, what I'm talking about. Wisdom of Solomon. Is it 12, the one about beginning to end? Uh, bear with me a second, I'm looking. 14, 14 27. Yep. yep. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 27. So you want to know what the sin was that Eve did? Here it is. For the worshiping of idols. For the worshiping of idols. Go ahead. Not to be named. Uh-huh. Is the beginning. Is the beginning. The beginning. The beginning. The beginning. The beginning. Go ahead. The cause mm -hmm. and the end of all evil. The Bible tells you what the beginning sin was. That's idolatry. Idolatry. Come out of the Christian church. They don't know a damn thing. Go back to Genesis 3. What verse you was at? Uh, verse 7. 
Read that again, verse 7. Okay, I read, I read 6. I'll read 6. Okay. All right, book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And Adam got weak and followed his woman. This is why a lot of you brothers that follow your wife, we have no respect for you. Society, as a matter of fact, the, well, I won't say that because you got LGBT respect you. But everybody else don't respect men that follow women. It's pathetic. What, I want to know historically, when did women lead a movement and overthrow a society? Where is this historically? You got Black Lives Matter, the women leading the charge. That's all lesbians out there and homosexuals. That's going to fail. Like you see it failing. You got, yeah, Black Lives Matter. No. You had a woman, what's her name? Joan of Arc, that led uh, a rebellion during the Middle Ages. What happened? Did anybody know what happened to her? They burned her alive at the stake for putting on men's armor and trying to go to war. I could do it too. I could do it too. She got burned alive. Then all these uh, like Game of Thrones they got out now. They got, uh, what's this other one, the new one? House of Dragons. House of Dragons, where all the women are wearing, look at it, a lot of women are wearing pants. That's historically inaccurate. But they're putting it in, not y'all minds, their minds, that's acceptable. That's the way it was. Yeah, 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 we dress like that. No, the women did not dress like that. They were burned for dressing like men. That's history. But some of you, you know, you go home, your wife put on her trousers. You know who you are. What verse we at? Verse 7. Come on. And the eyes of them both were open, mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked. When it says they knew that they were naked, it means they knew that they were sinful in the midst of sin. Go ahead. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. What does that mean? Get that in Job 31, 33. The book of Job, chapter 31, verse 33. If I covered my transgressions as Adam, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. If I covered my transgressions as Adam. That's what it means he sold fig leaves. He tried to hide. Okay, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. So, what we're looking at is how Satan came to Eve. She gave in. Satan could not go to Adam. Satan went to Eve. Eve is the one that whispered in Adam's ear. And the Most High cursed all three of them, okay? But if y'all get a chance, look at Bishop Kenai's class about that. He went over, he touched on it more in depth. Get Romans 5.14. So the first one we addressed just now when Satan enters in was Adam and Eve. How Eve failed, okay? Adam failed because of listening to her. Romans 5.14. The book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, mm -hmm. even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. See that? Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. What do you mean? So a lot of people say, I didn't worship no idol. I didn't get into idolatry. Uh, uh, but that, that sin nature passed down from Adam and went through everybody. Read it again. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, mm -hmm. who is in the figure of him that was to come. Who is the figure of him that was to come, which is Christ. Give me a uh, second Ezra 321. Second Ezra. I'm still dealing with Adam and Eve. I'm dealing with Satan enters in. And I'm dealing with Adam and Eve right now. Second Ezra 321. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 3 and verse 21. For the first Adam. For the notice what it says. For the first Adam. Adam. Hmm. Go ahead. Bearing a wicked heart transgress. Oh, bearing a wicked heart transgress. Wait, give me that precept. Um, I believe it's Romans 8. Romans 8. It says the creature is not subject mm, willingly. You know what I'm talking about? Let me, let me look at it. Verse 20. And we're going to come back to second Ezra's precepts yes. with it. The book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. The creature is man. Talking about Adam. For the creature was made subject to vanity, meaning sin. Go ahead. Not willingly. Not willingly. But by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. The Most High made Adam like that. He, his plan was always to bring in Christ. His plan was always to usher in the kingdom of heaven. But he had to start somewhere. He said, I got a story. I'm going to start with this man, Adam, right here. But Adam's perfect. 
he won't fall. No, no, I'm going to make him a little way. He's going he gonna to listen to that woman. He's going to fall right there. Then I'm going to bring in my plan to bring in the son of God, the ruler of earth. That was his whole plan. Now back to 2 Ezra 321. The book of Ezra, sec, chapter 3, verse 21. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. And so be all they that are born of him. Give me same book, chapter 4, verse 30. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 4, and verse 30. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. See that? It's the, Ezra's, the angel's telling Ezra. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Go ahead. And how much ungodliness hath it brought up unto this time? Mm -hmm. And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? The time of threshing is when Christ returned. He said, his, the angels are letting you know there's going to be more wickedness on this planet than we could ever imagine. Okay. From there, give me 1 Timothy 2.14. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived. Oh, you see that part right there? Adam was not deceived. So what was Adam's sin? Presumptuous. He was, Adam was not tricked. Right. Adam's sin was presumptuous. He loved his wife. He listened to his wife. Read it again. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived. But the woman was the one deceived. She was literally deceived. Go ahead. Was in the transgression. Was in the transgression. Why? She didn't want to listen to her husband. She didn't want to listen to the word of God. It's the same problem today. Well, sister, your husband, I don't want to hear what he said. Well, the Bible, I don't want to hear what the Bible said. What white man say? What white man say? I listen to what white man say. It's the same problem. Very few sisters can see that enactment again today. Very few. If there's 10, if you get 10 sisters in a room, maybe three understand it. The other seven will not have a clue. They will railroad you, argue with you, fight with you. I'm going to show you what happened at Feast of, uh, Feast of uh, uh, Tabernacles. Don't let me forget that in case I, it slipped my mind. I'm going to show you what these women did. Uh, where we at? Uh, 214. Mm, go ahead. Not with I know what they think. I wish that nigga hurry up and die. Don't worry. But before I go, I got a, a message for you. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. The Bible says the only way she's going to be saved is in childbearing. What does that mean? Give me somebody. Come up to the mic. Who got a clue? This mic right here. Nobody got a clue in here? Y'all ain't training these young men up? Nobody know nothing? What the hell is going on here? Come on, somebody. What does it mean she shall be saved in childbearing? Oh, who are you? Soldier Simon. Soldier Simon. Cut the mic on. Soldier Simon. Shalom, Simon. I'm um, bringing forth children. I don't understand that. So a lot of these women are single. We got single baby mamas all across America. And they hate their husbands. They don't do a damn thing about you. They being saved? Is that what you're saying? No. So what are you saying? Simon says. <laughs> Come on. I know you, you have a clue. I know you got a clue. Hey, get Genesis 3.6. You stay right there. Get Genesis 3.16. I'm going to see if you figure it out. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 16. Leave that. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Go ahead. You're on, Simon. He just read the answer to you. Read it again for him. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. What is that? So that's about childbearing, right? right? Okay, but there's more to the childbearing. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Bring forth children. That's what you said, right? Go ahead. And thy, de and, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. What that mean? Thy desire shall be to your husband. That you shall uh, submit to your husband. Right. What, whatever you desire, you get it right. from your husband. Right. Go ahead. And he shall rule over thee. What that mean? 
that he controls you. He rules over you. Right. That's how she's going. Go back to first. Thank you, Simon. Go back to first. That's what that first sentence is talking about. It ain't talking about these baby mamas walking around with their self. Go ahead. Read that. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So the childbearing deals with her submitting to her husband, having ch- all of that that we just read in Genesis 3.16. It ain't just popping out babies. Go ahead. If they continue in Then it faith, says if. You see those two, those two letters? If. If they what? Continue in faith in and faith charity. And charity. And holiness. And holiness. With sobriety. With, I mean, she got to be keeping the commandments. Everybody understand that? Yes, That's the, that is the stipulation for women being saved. Not just because they're sitting in here with a head covering, fringes, and a, a border blue. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Wait till I show you a feast of time now. You're going to see what these women with fringes and border blue done did. Where we at now? Are Give we- me Ecclesiasticus 25, 24 though. Not the women here in New York. I'm not, I'm not talking about New York here. I'm talking about the Southern Sisters. Dang. The Southern Bells. Hey, Bishop, we can't blame the Southern Sisters because we have sisters from New York and all over that converge here. We can't oh, just, that's yeah. I'm going to talk about them, yeah, too. We can't, we can't just I got to get them. I got to get them. You know, you know I go. can't know, man. I can't do that to my Southern Deacon, Sisters, man. You know? You're right. You're right about you right about that. Know, you remember so one of them burned up. Some of them snuck down to Alabama. We're going to get y'all today. <laughs> Where we at? Ecclesiasticus yes. 25, 24. 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her, we all die. You, do you brothers hear that? I want the simp brothers to un- read that again. This is for you simp, you beta males. Go ahead. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her, we all die. That's God speaking. God is telling you that. Stop listening to her. She got us in a, the, all the hell we in now because of her. Adam listened to her. And now look where we at in captivity. Catching hell. I know what's the Lord's plan. Anyway, now we're going to move on. And talk about Job's wife and what happened with Job's wife when Satan entered in. So I remember why I'm going over this. A lot of times we think Satan can't enter us. That's a lie. Satan will whisper in our ear, enter us, make all manner of evil pop out of us. I'm telling you, read that. Job chapter uh, 2 and 5. The book of Job chapter 2 and verse 5. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. This is Job talking to the Lord. Uh, not Job, excuse me. Satan talking to the Most High. Excuse me. Read it again. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So this is what Satan says to the Lord. Read start at four, as a matter of fact. All right. Verse four. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Read. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Where was she said? Where did she get that from? Anybody know where she got that from? Hmm. Anybody know where she got We just read it, brothers. Come on. I need to know that y'all picking up in the spirit. Come on, come to the mic, man. Come on. I need to know we are not wasting our time on you brothers. Read. I mean, go ahead. Uh, Satan entered into her when he touched um, his flesh, his bone and his flesh. How do you know Satan entered into her? Because she said, uh, curse God and die. And who said said that originally? It was Satan in verse. Exactly. Very good. The same thing Satan said is what uh, Job's wife said. Satan entered into her. Okay. Curse God and die die. So don't think Satan can't jump on you. Oh, oh, yeah, it's very possible. We saw a big thing of that in 2018. From there, give me first Samuel 15. I'm going to talk about King Saul. We talk about him a lot. He was an anointed king. The first anointed king over the nation of Israel. First Samuel 15, I want verse 22 and 23. All right. Book of first Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. So Samuel said, the Lord wants obedience rather than sacrifice. Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. See that? Obedience is better than you sacrificing. Go ahead. And to hearken 
than the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion. Anytime you have a rebellious brother or a rebellious sister, the Bible says that's as the sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And that stubborn soul is as iniquity and idolatry. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Why? Because ultimately you have rejected the word of the Lord. Go ahead. He hath also rejected thee from being king. He has rejected thee from being king. So Saul was rebellious. Like we have some brothers and some sisters who are walking in the same footsteps, footsteps of rebellion. Jump over to chapter 16 and verse 14. Watch this. Book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Y'all see that? You see what rebellion causes? You see what stubbornness causes? The spirit of the Lord will leave. That Holy Spirit will depart from you. And an evil spirit will enter in. We saw it a big thing in 2018 with the weasels and all them clowns. Okay? Read it again. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You'll meet brothers, you'll meet sisters who come in, they got to seem like they got a good spirit. But there'll be something in God's law that they just don't like. Whether it's A, her submitting to her husband, or B, uh, you get, man getting a job. I don't know, I'm just shooting off the top of the head. There'll be something you just can't get with. And all of a sudden that spirit of rebellion comes on you. And that good spirit you had at one time, read it again. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And an evil spirit from the Lord will trouble you. Now we're looking at you in the corner sitting by yourself. You don't socialize the way you used to socialize. You are, you are a different spirit now. You're not the same brother or the same sister we once knew. Why? The spirit of rebellion. And now Satan has entered the room. Okay, from there, King David, First Chronicles 21 and 1. Hey, Bishop, and they think we don't see when, when the evil spirit enter into them. Right, right. Hey, as a matter of fact, give me that in uh, Jude. Uh, these are sensual. These are they to separate themselves. That one. That one. This goes with that. Just popped in my head. The book of Jude, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves. You see that? The brother or the sister will be the one in the beginning... He or she was always around. He or she was always helpful. He or she loved to study. He or she loved to hear the scriptures. But what happened? Read it again. These be they who separate themselves. So sometime later, you start to separate yourself. Go ahead. Sensual. Sensual. Mean, that word sensual, when you look it up in the biblical definition, means emotional damage. <laughs> That's what that means. Sensual means emotional. Go ahead. Having not the spirit. Having, oh, see that part? Having not the spirit. The spirit of the Lord has left the room. Now Satan has entered in. Was that it? Yes, sir. Read it again. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. I thought it said something like devilish. It didn't say nothing like that in there? Because I'm not looking at it. You don't say no, that? No. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking another verse. Okay. From there, First Chronicles 21.1. The book of First Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So David was the second anointed king. Notice it said, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Remember, we were not, uh, that was against God's law. We were only, only ones we numbered was 20 and up that went to war. That was it. Okay. But Satan provoked David to do it. And as we read down, I'm not going to read all the way down. You can read down to verse 15 on your own. Okay. Well, actually, let me just jump down just for a moment. Let me look. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, jump down to 11. Verse 11. No, so, jump to 10. I like 10. Verse 10. No, nope. jump to 9. I'm sorry. <laughs> 9, 9. Verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer. The word saying, seer means uh, prophet, Gad. Right? Go and tell David, saying, thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. This is where they get that. You ever seen a movie that get the genie gives you three wishes? Right. The Lord said, I offer you three things. You have to pick one, though. Go ahead. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes. 
while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself, what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. So you got three things to choose from David. Let's see what David chooses, go ahead. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. Right, that's the foes. The hand of man was the foes part. The hand of the Lord is the part that says, um, or else three days the sword of the Lord, right. even a pestilence in the land and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. That's the hand of the Lord. Read on. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil. David knew that thing. He said, if I fall into the hands of the Lord, chances are the Lord going to have mercy on me. Go ahead. And said, and said to the angel that destroyed, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And you know what this also shows us? That when Satan um, provokes you to do evil... The whole nation can suffer as a result. This, the white man ain't figured out, out in all his church. All the evil that their presidents do, they don't realize that their people are going to suffer as a result of many of those judgments or wrong judgments that they have passed over us. Watch what the Lord do with them. If we suffer for the because our king did one, he, he, he numbered Israel. What about their kings? What about their kings? What about their people? Watch what happens. Okay, from there, from there. Give me Psalms 51.11. So Satan provoked King David. Satan entered the room. I'm showing you, no matter how great you are, Satan can get on you. Satan, uh, Psalms 51 and 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. See what David said? Cast me not away from thy presence. Because remember, that's happened to Saul. The Lord cast Saul away. So David says here, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's something you got to do quick. Right. You got to ask the Lord for that thing. You got to get on your knees, beg, cry, and plead. Because once that spirit gone and Satan enters into you, you finished. That's what happened to Saul. He was finished. Okay. From there, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit of discipline is God's law. God's laws. Read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Will flee deceit. Go ahead. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So if brothers or sisters are sitting among us being deceitful, you're a, you're a super powerful Israelite when we're face to face with you. But at home, you're that derelict Israelite. You're that, uh, give me some terms, some words. You're that whoremonger brother or, or whore sister. Okay, you know what you do. That's deceit. And the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. That good spirit that's on you will leave. Read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Right, thoughts that are without understanding. You can't judge right and wrong. Okay, you don't know the difference between right and wrong. Give me Zechariah 3. Let's talk about during the Persian captivity. There was Joshua, the high priest. This is during the Persian Mede captivity. I'm sorry, Bishop. Zechariah? Zechariah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, let's start at verse 1. Now, let me fill you in. Anybody know what happened during the time of um, Joshua, the high priest? Anybody know? Anybody remember? You had Zerubbabel, you had Joshua, their job was to do something. Nobody knows. Uh, you with the glasses. Yes, you. I forgot your name. I remember you from years ago. Shalom, Michelle. Shalom. Officer Mattathias. Officer Mattathias. So yes, what sir. happened? So they had to build a temple. Who had it? Somebody had to build Zerubbabel it? Zerubbabel and Joshua. Zerubbabel yes, and sir. Joshua. And what happened? So when they were trying to build the temple, they, were, they had uh, adversaries attacking them, preventing them not to build the temple. And what happened? So it delayed from them building the temple. That's it? Um, that's what I remember. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, not only did it delay, they stopped. When you read Haggai, real quick. Mm. 
Haggai chapter 1, mm, verse 1 and 2. This is what happened. It was right in front of Zechariah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one page over. We're right, <laughs> we're right past it. Okay, Haggai, chapter one, in verse one. We're going one. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. So but Haggai was the Haggai the prophet was who the Lord chose. Let's see what he was chosen to do. Go ahead. Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah. And to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So Zerubbabel and Joshua said, because of all the trouble they got from building the temple, they said, this ain't the time to build the Lord's house. This ain't the time. Read. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying. So now the Lord sent Haggai to Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest, to tell him what? Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? So Haggai got on Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest, said, you're busy building your own house, but God's house lies waste. Waste? What is wrong with you? Who raised you? Go ahead. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Haggai told him, you better consider your ways. Go ahead. Ye have sown much uh -huh. and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. So Haggai was getting on the two greatest men at that time because they got fearful. Maybe this ain't the time to build the Lord's house with all this trouble we got. The Lord said, Haggai, I want you to get on them too so that they're going to do what I commanded them to do. Now go back to Zechariah. Chapter 3 and 1. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Y'all see that right there? Who was standing at his right hand? Satan. Standing at his right hand to resist him. Because whatever jo what jo Joshua, the high priest, wanted to do, he got a lot of pushback. Then he just gave up. That's what was going on. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Mm -hmm. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Meaning what? He said, Joshua was chosen. I chose Joshua the high priest. Come on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Mm -hmm. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. So the Lord is saying to the angels, take away Joshua's filthy garments. Go ahead. And unto him he said, behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. You see that? I Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. So the Lord was forgiven, Joshua. Okay, go ahead. And I said, let them set a fair metre upon his head. So, so they set a fair metre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways. This is what the angel said to Joshua. He's reminding him. If thou wilt walk in my ways. Go ahead. And if thou wilt keep my charge, uh -huh. then thou shalt also judge my house mm -hmm. and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Meaning what? I'm going to give you a seat in the kingdom. Just do what I said. Go ahead. Here now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Now when you read on, we'll go to this another time. Let's talk about Christ coming out of the line of Zerubbabel. Okay? That's the servant, the branch. So what I'm showing you is that even Joshua the high priest had Satan standing at his right hand. So never think Satan can't get in your head. When you got, when you bitter... You got grudges against brothers and sisters, against your spouse, that's Satan on you, okay? You just got to catch it before it gets worse and worse. From there, let's talk about the Apostle Peter, Luke twenty two thirty one. 31. The book the of Luke, Peter. chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. See what Christ said to Peter? Satan has desired to have you. So what if Christ, I saw in the spirit, Satan wants to destroy you, Peter. 
and desire to sift you like wheat. Go ahead. But I have prayed for thee. Christ said, but I have prayed for thee, Peter. Go ahead. That thy, fail, that, that thy faith fail not. He said, Peter, I'm praying for you that your faith fail not. Go ahead. And when thou art converted. And, and, oh, 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 when thou art converted. Strengthen thy brethren. Now let's pause there for a second. Peter was walking with Christ three years. Now Christ says to him, when you are converted, strengthen your breath. Wait, wait, stop. Wait a minute. I thought I was converted when I first came in. Mm -mm. No, you're in Sunday school. No, you're not converted in a few minutes. No, sure. You do your prayers. You ask for mercy and forgiveness. Conversion takes years. It takes time. Why? Because there's a lot of things in all of us we have to purge out of us. And in order to purge it out of us, we have to look at it face to face. Okay? Some brothers don't know they're a bum. You got to see you're a bum and say, you know what? I'm a bum. I got to fix this situation. You know what? I do hate my, my brother. I got to fix this situation. I do hate my spouse. I got to fix this situation. I do love porn and pornography. I got to fix this situation. That takes years. It does not take a few minutes. Come out of the church. Come out of Sunday school. Wake up. Read it again. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Christ said, when you're converted, Peter, I want you to strengthen your brethren. Why? Because Peter was the head disciple, head apostle. But he wasn't converted yet at this time. He thought he was, but no, he wasn't. Give me from there, Matthew 16, 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 16 and verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Let's start at 20, mm, 22. No, let's start at 21. Verse so we get to full thought. Verse 21. From that time forth be began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. See what Peter said? He's trying to protect the Lord. He said, Lord, I won't let nothing happen to you. I won't, know, I won't let nobody kill you. Look at Christ's response. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, Christ called Peter Satan. Why did he call him Satan? Christ knew, Peter didn't know, that he had to die so that the nation of Israel could be redeemed. Peter didn't see that. He couldn't understand that. So what he, in his mind, I'm going to protect you, Lord. Peter saw that, I mean, Christ saw that and said, no, that's Satan in you. Because Satan in you is trying to make you think you're doing a good thing. Right. But what you're doing will get the whole nation of Israel destroyed. So get behind me, Satan. Read it again. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Right. What you're thinking is man's thoughts. Man's, oh, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure nothing happened to you. Christ, Christ already told him, I have to die. I have to be a sacrifice. Peter's like, no, no, no. So you got the devil on you, Peter. From there, John 18, 10. I'm showing you how Satan can enter into us all. The book of John, chapter 18 and verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Let's start up uh, at nine. This Verse is when it came to get Christ. Verse 9. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant. And so he still didn't get it. Peter still didn't. Even Christ told him I have to die. Peter said, mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm going to protect you. Go ahead. And cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Christ had to correct him again. The cup that the Lord gave to me, shall I not drink it? I am destined to be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, Peter. What don't you understand? You got the devil on you. Stop it. That's what he's telling them. So sometimes it may appear that we're doing something good, but it's against the Lord. There's another one that just popped in my mind with King Josiah. 
when the Lord sent the king of, was it Egypt? I believe it was Egypt to go against Babylon. And King Josiah went to fight against the king of Egypt. And the king of Egypt said, hey, mind your business. Right. The Lord sent me to do this. And Josiah said, no, I'm going to fight you. And got put to death. Sometimes you interfere and you're in God's business. You get jacked the hell up. Okay. Now let's talk about one of the most famous um, guys that Satan entered into, Judas Iscariot. Luke 22 and verse 1. We had a lot of Judas Iscariots back in 2018, and, uh, and he's still talking smack to no avail. These guys are losers. They're nothing. They have not stopped this gospel at all. Luke 22 and verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Always remember, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is called the Passover. It's the same holiday. It has two different names. Go ahead. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they may kill him. For they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Uh oh, read that again, verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Read it again. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, mm -hmm. being of the number of the twelve. So Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. You got to recognize when Satan enters into you. You know, you think something wicked, you, go, you got to be able to say, oh, no, 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 that's not me, that's Satan. Get this thought, Lord, get these thoughts out of my head. Y'all got you men, you women, you got to be able to catch it. Some you can, some you don't. You entertain the evil, like Judas did here. Read on. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto death. See that? How he might betray him unto them. Go ahead. And they were glad and, cov and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Mm -hmm. then see that, that, see that, that covetousness for money? Some of y'all got that spirit. On. Give me that precept in 1 Timothy 6, uh, might be 6 through 8, something like for the love of money, that one. Because you look at Judas who betrayed Christ for money and go, I could never do that. If you was ever in a rap game, you will betray your people for money. If you was ever in the NBA, uh, NBA, what's that other sport? The uh, football, whatever NFL. that is, NFL. Uh, if you was ever um, in the drug world, selling drugs, you will betray for some money. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 9. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you ain't fooling the Lord. Go ahead. But they that will be rich mm -hmm. fall into temptation See that? and a but snare. But they that will be rich fall into what? Temptation and a snare. Temptation and a snare. Traps. Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. I saw a video the other day. Some of y'all may have seen it. Some do. I don't know these rappers. I think his name is called Smart. He's in a barbershop and he's talking about the rap world. And he says that you go to a party and they give you a drink. And they um, drug you. He said this one rapper, he didn't name his name, got drugged up. Five dudes booty raped him in a room and they videotaped it. The next day, they went to sign the record contract. And it was a terrible contract. And he didn't like the contract. He said, yo, this is a terrible contract. And it brought the video out, said, if you don't sign it, we're going to put this video out. So what do you think he did? He signed the contract. Okay, so y'all can look at the video. It's on YouTube. I didn't make it up. Where we at? Read it again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. But and they that will be rich fall into temptation. Go ahead. And it's a many foolish and hurtful lusts. And it's a many foolish and hurtful lusts. Go ahead. Which drown men in destruction. Which and drown perdition. men. In, I need you to read slower. Which drown men in destruction. Which drown men in destruction. And perdition. And Perdition means hell. Go ahead. For the love of money. For the love of money. Mm -hmm. Is the root of all evil. Is the root of, that's where betrayal comes from. Money is your God. Money is your idol. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. Which while some coveted after. Which, like Judas coveted after, some of you coveted after. They have erred. From they have the erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See that? Now that describes Judas Iscariot. But P Paul is talking about all of us have that potential to what we just read right there. When money is your God. 
Okay, you're not content. And nobody's saying you cannot improve your situation. That's good. But read the part about be content. It's right there somewhere. I'm not looking at it. But, but godliness, godliness and yeah, something. So, uh, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So somebody will ask me, well, I work at, I'm a bag checker at Walmart. I don't make no daggone money. So you say I got to be content with that? Well, to be content means... Of course, A, you can improve your situation. But if you get into lying, stealing, you're not content. That's what it's talking about. Read that again. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Be content with where, at, where you're at, and you can improve your situation. But if you decide, I'm going to lie, steal, betray, murder, you're not content. Read. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Right. So I hope everybody, you, you, especially you men, I know some of you want to get married. You're, you, you're examining your living situation, your financial situation. You can do better. But not being content means I will steal, I will lie, I will sell drugs, I will kill people. That's not being content. Okay. Where we at now? Matthew, you no, know, back to uh, Luke 22. Yes, back to Luke 22. All right. We're at verse 33. No, 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 no. Start we at 31. At, we was at, we read down to what? Oh, uh, we read down, we read 31 and 32. Luke 22. We read one through five. You messing me up. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Any, we have verse six. All right. Read Any, five again. Read five again. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And covenanted to give him money. To covenant to give him money. Okay. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. So when money is your God, there's nothing you won't do. You betray mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, because money is your God. We see it here with Judas. Paul expounded on it in the book of Timothy. We see it. We, we've seen it here in IUIC. When money is your God, what you want, the lengths of Satan you won't go to. You'll sit down with the white man who you know is trying to destroy Israel. And sit down and say, we're a hate group. We want to kill people and do this and that. Right. That's how far you'll go. And think, you'll say, I've done nothing wrong. You've got the devil on you. And it's, the devil is going to stay on you too. Mark 14, 21. The book of Mark, chapter 14 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. The son of man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Christ said it would have been better if Judas Iscariot had never been born. That's how the Son of God feels about betrayal. I'm going to say it again. That's how the Son of God feels about betrayal. Okay? We had a situation in um, England, the Joy Morgan case, where a sister... And IUIC stood up, went into the court, gave the arrangements of the room, gave the names of the officers, and tried to say that we had something to do with the death of Joy Morgan. It would have been better if that sister had never been born than to lie and betray like that. You had a brother from the, that refurbished UPK, did the same thing, ran to court. Oh, yeah, IUIC, they wicked, they sat in court and testified how evil we was in America. He's in the UK, we in America. And we had something to do with the death of our sister, Joy Morgan. It would have been better if he had never been born. Go tell that. That's what, the, read it again so you understand this what Christ said. The son of man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Mm -hmm. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And it always say this, an attack on a king's men is an attack on the king. Christ, who's the king? Christ. He is the king, brother. I'm going to show it. When we get to Matthew 25, don't let me forget that. I'm going to show you that thing right there. Because black people don't get it. It's been better for a lot of you not been born. Matthew hey, 18. Hey, Bishop, yeah. but they might say, they might say, listen, I betrayed these niggas. I ain't betrayed Christ. I, I'm going to show them. Remind me that. I'm going to show them that in Matthew 25. Uh, where we at now? Verse 22. No, no, no. Give me Matthew 24, oh, 10. Right. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 10. 
And then shall many be offended. Then shall many be offended at this gospel, at this truth. And shall betray one another. Oh, Christ is prophesying right there. He says, and shall betray one another. That was a prophecy for that time. And it's a prophecy for today. I'm going to say it again. It was a prophecy for back then. And it's a prophecy for these end times. Read it again. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. Uh -huh. And shall hate one another. And betray and hate. Was that it? Yes, sir. Read it again. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Mm, from there. That was uh, 2410, right? Yes, sir. Give me 18 and 6. Matthew 18 and 6. The book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. So if you offend one of these little ones, the little ones are the believers. No matter how old you are, we are the little ones. Read it again. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, uh -huh. it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Christ, what is he saying? It would have been better if you kill yourself than to offend one of these that believe in me. To offend one of these that believe in him means what? You are betraying them. You're putting a stumbling block of sin in their way, trying to cause them to fall. Christ said it'd be better if you drop dead and die. That's the son of God. They don't read that in church. Read it again. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's the son of God speaking. Better that you go kill yourself. That's what Christ is saying. That's your Bezalel, Mark Kairos, the Chinese boy. What's his name? I don't even know his name no more. Chinese boy. Chinese boy. Chinese uh, the fat dude that fled to Africa. Um, I don't even the know one that said name. he would shoot up the school. From yeah, that the guy. HODC school, Matato. Exactly, that guy. It'd be Christ said it'd be better that you kill yourself than to betray, to offend us, than to offend one of the little ones. That's what, see, you read and go, oh, I don't know if I should say that. That's why we know some of y'all going to betray this truth. You'll read the Bible, look at it, and then say, well, I'm not going to say, I don't agree with what Christ said there. To hell with you and your mama. We don't give a damn about you or your mama. We're going to tell you what the Bible says. Go drop dead and die. Okay. From there, give me Matthew 25. Now, this is what I was talking about, an attack on the king's men. You little nasty Negroes and Hispanics. To hell with you. <laughs> Matthew 25, 31. The book of Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 31. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. See that part right there as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. When it says all nations, let me help y'all out there. It's talking about Israelites coming out of all nations. Can I prove that? Give me Ezekiel 34. And I want verse one. Then we're going to jump to 17. This is not talking about, uh, Israel, and you got Moab and Ammon. It's not talking about that. Here these, uh, some of these Israelites with their stupid breakdowns. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, you want to go to 17? One, read. Oh, you read one. Yeah, read one and two. Read one and two. All right. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? So it's talking about the Israelites. Now, the shepherds of Israel, the leaders, jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of the pastures, and to have drunk up the deep waters. But ye must foul. foul the residue with your feet. Read. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, mm -hmm. and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Read. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I even I will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. So that's what it's talking about. That is the precept. Go back to uh, Matthew 25. The book Matthew, of Matthew 25 and verse 32 again. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them from one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep 
from the goats. So the sheep and the goats is what we just read in Ezekiel the 34th chapter, talking about the Israelites. There's sheep among us, there's goats among us. Go ahead. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And he's going to break it down exactly what he's talking about. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto then them. Then shall who? Then shall the king. The who? The king. The who? The king. Okay, go ahead. Say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying. Notice what it said. Then shall the righteous. So the sheep here are the righteous. Go ahead. Saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Why does it, when it says a stranger, because remember, we grew up as African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, uh, Liberians, whatever. Those are strangers. Now we say, no, you're not a stranger. You're an Israelite. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Or when saw we sick? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Mm -hmm. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. You see that? When you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done that to me. Go ahead. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Now he's going to talk to the goats that was on the left hand. Go ahead. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Mm, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. That's why I always say the way we deal with one another is how we deal with the Lord. So when I say an attack on a king's men is an attack on the king, that's what this is saying. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. You can't do evil to the little ones that believe on him and think, I didn't do that to the Lord. I did it to you niggas. No, no, you did it to the Lord. That shows when people don't understand the Bible at all. They don't know what they're reading. They don't know what they're into. Bishop, can I prove it? Yes. The scripture? <clears throat> Go to John chapter 16, verse 1. This is proof that you can't say, I'm attacking you niggas. I'm not attacking the most high. This is proof. This is why Christ warned this. The book of John chapter 16 and verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Because when the attack comes, some people get offended. So Christ said, I'm telling you this in advance, so you don't get mad when this happens, which is this. Read on. They shall put you out of the synagogue. How are they trying to put us out of the synagogue, the places of learning for Israel? They're recording conversations. They're going to uh, law enforcement. They're going to the media to try and destroy the place of learning. Christ warned that you men that were set up to teach, that people will attack you and try to destroy you to get you out of the place of learning for Israel. Read on. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you. Some have lied on us so that the public could attack us. Remember, they shot up a member's car when the Joy Morgan's thing was going on. There were other Israelite camps saying, go and shoot up the school. Go and attack them, posting our address everywhere we live. So there were men behind the scenes trying to get us killed. Read on. Will think that he doeth God's service. And they said they were doing it in the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Y'all don't remember that? Mm -hmm. There was black Hebrew Israelite camps trying to lead an attack on us and threaten us and put addresses and put names, talk about our families, post pictures up, record conversations. Y'all all forgot that mm -hmm. because they wanted to cause harm to us. Right. And the cowards that they are, they won't do it themselves. They'll just put it out on the Internet to hope there's some idiot listening to do it. That's what because they themselves are cowards. Every last one of them. They won't step to nobody, raise a hand, nothing. They won't do it. From there, let's talk about Christ now. Christ being tempted. Give me that Matthew 4 and 1. 
The book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then was Jesus led up, the, led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So Satan starts tempting him with food. Go ahead. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he didn't give in to Satan's uh, temptation. He came with the scriptures. He's showing us how to war. When, we, when those lusts come on us, when those temptations come on us, use the word of God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him in a and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now this is uh, written in Psalms 91. He's, notice what Satan said, If thou be the son of God. So he's trying to put doubt in Christ's head. You ain't who you think you are. But if you are, jump off. Because the scriptures say the angels will bear thee up. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he comes back with the scripture. That's Deuteronomy 6, 16. Read. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So Satan shows Christ all the kingdoms of the world at that time and in the future. Go ahead. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He said, if you worship me, I'll give you all the wealth and power you want. Go ahead. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So the devil left. And, it, and another scripture says Satan left for a season. All right. I believe that's in Mark. Mark or Luke, one of those two. It said he left for a season. Luke. Don't think that was the only time Christ was tempted. Satan leaves and returns. I'm going to show you that too. You might overcome today, but he may come back next week and revisit you. Okay? From there, give me uh, Hebrews 4.15. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, uh -huh. but was in all points tempted like as we are. Christ was tempted in all points like as we are. Notice, we only read three types of temptation. Food, um, tempting God, jumping off the cliff, and uh, power. Only three. But the Bible, read that part again. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Y'all don't know that women follow Christ around. Y'all don't know a woman uh, took a hair out and dried his. You don't think thoughts came to his mind? I can imagine. I know what I would think if a woman's drying my feet with a hair. I know my mind goes left field. You don't think these things into Christ? It's just not written down. But it says, read it again. But was in all points. Tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Yet without sin. He was tempted in every way you can imagine. Every way. I want to say something, but it might be very offensive, so I'll just keep it to myself. Give me Mark 7. Uh, how many, how many, Satan enters in through our lusts, Satan enters in through our temptations, our thoughts, the demons we struggle with. That's how Satan, there's a door there. Uh, how many demons would you say you, you got on you? You. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Stand up and go to the mic. How many demons would you say you got? I don't know. I got a lot of demons. A lot. Would you say more than 10 or less than 10? Um, damn, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, have I a seat. Know. All right. Give me that in Mark 7, 20. When Christ tells you how much the average person, how many demons the average person has on them. Read that. The book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21. For from within... 
out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts is one. That's okay. We all got evil thoughts. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adulteries. That's two. Go ahead. Fornications. Fornications. That's three. Murders. Murderous thoughts. That's four. Thefts. Thefts. That's five. Covetousness. Covetousness. That's six. Wickedness. Wickedness. That's seven. Deceit. Deceit. That's eight. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. That's nine. An evil eye. An evil eye that's hate towards your brother. That's, uh, where was that? I forgot. Ten. Go ahead. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. That's 11. Pride. Pride. That's uh, 12. Foolishness. Foolishness. That's 13. And all these evil things come from within and defile the man. 13 demons we struggle with. That's average. That's typical. Average, typical man, woman got 13 demons to battle with. Some are stronger than others. But now, but now, what about the sodomite? <laughs> Give me that Romans 125. Because some of you in here may be battling with same-sex, uh, give me some nice words, tendencies. Okay, I like that word. That's very nice. Curiosity, that's where, I don't know if it's curiosity. Proclivities? Proclivities, okay, I'll go with that one. Uh, where we at? Romans the, chapter one, one, verse 25. In verse 25. Okay, now, remember, the average man, the average woman has 13 demons. 13. Now we're gonna talk about the sodomite. Let's go. The book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Mm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? You can read about that in Maccabees. Uh -huh. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who worshipped and served the white man more than the creator. Mm -hmm. Who is blessed forever. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Come on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Mm -hmm. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So women change the natural use of being with a man, having a baby, into that which is against nature. It's about lesbians. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men. Yes, likewise the men. Go ahead. Leave you know, there's not a movie you can look at on Netflix or Amazon without a homosexual scene being in there. I'm like, every, every time I got a speed fast forward, what the hell is this? Yeah, for real. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. Oh, look at John's back. Ooh, what the hell is this? Go ahead. Men with men. Men working, with men. Working that which is unseemly. It's unseemly. Go ahead. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. The word recompense means judgment or payback. Of their error, which was meat, meaning good or right. Go ahead. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. So the sodomite doesn't like to retain God in their mind. Go ahead. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. uh, reprobate means void of judgment. Go ahead. To do those things which are not convenient. Go ahead. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Now the countdown starts. Unrighteous, being filled with all unrighteousness. That's one. Fornication. That's two. Wickedness. Three. Covetousness. Four. Maliciousness. Five. Full of envy. Six. Murder. Seven. Debate. Eight. Deceit. Nine. Malignity. Ten. Whisperers. Eleven. Backbiters. Twelve. Haters of God. Thirteen. Despiteful. Uh, Fourteen. Proud. Fifteen. Boasters. Sixteen. Inventors of evil things. Seventeen. Disobedient to parents. Eighteen. Without understanding. Nineteen. Covenant breakers. Twenty. Without natural affection. Twenty-one. Implacable. Twenty-two. Unmerciful. Twenty-three. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Twenty-three demons, if you're battling the homosexual lifestyle, male and female, you got 23 to, to, to battle with. That's some, that's some heavy stuff. When you think, I'm like, he went from 13 with the right average person, but that sodomite spirit deals with more demonic activity. That's why you read about uh, Legion. When Christ said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. And he had like 500 demons in him, okay? There's some heavy stuff right there. When you think about it, when you really sit down and think about it, which demonic lusts are activated? Because let's say 
Some of some of us in here got 13, some of us got 23. But which ones do the demons activate? That's my question. James 1 and 12. Now, y'all going to have to rewind this class and listen to it again and again and again. Because I'm going to give you solutions too, because I know you're battling. I see demons just popping around the room. I don't care if you put your head down, I see you. James 1 and 12. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Go ahead. For when he is tried. For when he is tried. He shall receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Right. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. So God is not saying, hey, be a homosexual. Hey, use drugs. Hey, I hate that nigga right there. That's not the Lord. That's already in you. These are things that are in you, whether they, um, they flourish from a child. Like many times I always hear sisters say, well, what about if you got molested as a child? Okay, well, demons entered in that way. You have to deal with that. Put it behind you, push it out. But if you are in your 40s talking about when I was eight years old, I got my last, that's going to ruin your chance for a good relationship. You need to stay single and die with a dog. You ain't wife material. Every time the husband, he touch her, ah, ah, hey, what's wrong? You reminded me of when I was eight. Oh, shut the hell up with that. That was going on here. You know, some brothers been molested. You don't hear nothing about that. Brothers be like, mm, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to, what they do on uh, uh, bad boys, we're going to crumble this up, put it in a box, box and throw it into the ocean. We're never going to speak on that again. That's how men do. Not that side of the room. Ah, 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 ah. And now the man got to pay all the rest of his life for being with her. It's like, dang, I can't even get no peace with this woman. They know what I'm talking about. Where we at? 14. Read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Y'all see that? So if you look at a brother's back and you go, woo, he got that V-shape going on there. <laughs> Somebody going to edit that and go see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should have used a truthful account of people who look at the image we have of Jesus Christ oh, and say how yeah. oily his chest is. Yes. That's truthful. Yes, that's truthful. There is an Israelite camp where one of the leaders look at the image we have of Christ and sit down and they lust after the image right in front of their congregation. And the picture ends at the chest and he goes, even the abs are oily. And you don't see no abs <laughs> on the picture. What the hell are you talking about? So, or if you... Uh, Drugs. I know one brother that he was in a VA. Uh, you know, when they give you drugs, a lot of times he says, yo, it was my friend. He gave me my, my he gave me it free. I said, no, that's how he hooked you, bro. The first one is always free to get you hooked on that thing. You simple as hell. You used to sell and you don't you don't know that you dumb as a rock. OK, or you get the, the hard up lonely sister. She knows she looked like uh, Laquisha. What's that? Eddie Murphy, Norbit and. Uh, Rasputian, that's the name. Put on the screen. Put on the screen. She nuts. Listen, I always, we always say you got to know what you look like, know what you're working with. So she, come on, y'all. You don't know. I don't know. Rasputian. Yeah, yeah, that's all right there. You, sister, you know if you look like this. Now I'm going to tell you the game. Here come a brother. He just got out yesterday. He's telling you. You look like Beyonce. You look like, give me some more. Uh, Naomi Campbell, that's all I could think of. That's, Halle, Berry. Halle Berry? Okay, Halle Berry. Who else? Tyra Banks. Tyra, Tyra Banks. She look all right? Okay, Tyra Banks. And you know you look like this, but you go, okay. Now you laying down with him. Ain't eating all your food. He took over your apartment. He just posted up, and now you got gonorrhea. Beat the doonies out of you. And now you got VD or some transmitted disease, and you trying to, well, why did God do this to me? Because you're stupid. You did it to yourself. You, when that temptation comes, resist the devil, and he will flee. You praying for a godly, a good man to love you, not some dude that just got out who need a place to stay, that needs some food, that need to... to, to 
give me some nice words. You know, I'll go in the deep end. They need to release. Can I say that? Yeah. To have sexual intercourse with To have sexual intercourse with you. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> so you got to know you. One brother, here go one brother. He's sitting up here on the podium, but I ain't going to call him out. He 110 pounds. The sister tells him, put, can you put up uh, Shamar Moore? Put up Shamar Moore. S-H-E-M-A-R. I think it's the E at the end, I'm not sure. M-O-O-R-E, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, right there. I want the one on the, wait, where's the one with the shirt off? The one on the left, bottom left, right there. The brother who's in here weighs a buck 20. She says, you look just like Shamar Moore. And he goes like this, yeah. They're like, what the hell is this? His muscle was like this. I said, bruh, stop it. That's Satan. That's Satan. You don't look like Shamar Moore. Stop. Pump up. Hey, give me Samuel Jackson. Uh, what's the name of that movie? Uh, no, not the Django. Cave, the cave Snake. 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 No, 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 no. The, he had a white girl chained in yeah. the back. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Black, black, mo black Snake Moan. Black Snake Moan. Give me that. Black Snake Moan. He got another brother. Click that. This is what the brother look like. He looked just like this. Not that one. Right there. And she convincing him, you look like Shamar Moore. I want to give you some. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Brothers, stop letting these women gas you up. Sisters, stop letting brothers gas you up. You got no, no, this is a gaslight. They gaslight me. What the hell is going on here? I know I don't look like that. The hell? Then you get caught out there. Where we at, Cap? Where we at? All right. You take uh, it off the screen. Right. 14 again. We in 14? Yeah. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust mm -hmm. and enticed. Uh -huh. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Y'all see that? So yeah, like that's what the scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. You're working. You can work for righteousness for the kingdom, or you can work for death. Because once that lust conceives, you give in. Now that lust comes sin, and that sin leads to death. That's what happens. And it's happened time and time again. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Yeah, Bishop, a lot of times when, when the lust, it says, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth death. Meaning there is stages to it. You know, you don't just... You don't just um, roll over and 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 um, and fall on it, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't just fall into it. It takes stages. You got to plan it out and all of that. Okay, so you can't say I don't know what happened. It start the sin starts in your mind first. That's where it start. Then then you fulfill that act. Then you commit that sin. But it always starts in the mind. That's why Christ tell us, listen, you all control your mind. If you look at a woman, you commit adultery already. Why? Because you already, it's already there. He said, if you hate your brother, you commit murder already. Why? Because the sin already here. You understand? So we got to kill it here before it meet that other stage where, where what? Where it bring forth sin and then sin bring forth death. You all understand? Hey, real quick, give me that in Job uh, 25, 15. To show you what uh, Deacon Malachi was saying, Sin, you got you to gotta work towards that. It's not something that happens accidentally, especially sex. It don't happen all of a sudden. You just don't fall on the penis. It don't happen. It's planned. Watch this. Job 25, 15. Job 25, 15. 24. 24. I'm sorry. I apologize. The book of Job, chapter 24 and verse 15. The eye also of the adulterer. We're talking about the adulterer. Go ahead. Waiteth for the twilight. See that? Number one, you wait for the twilight. You want to wait till it's dark. Most people is home. Go ahead. Saying, no eye shall see me. Saying, ain't nobody out here. Everybody went to sleep. And what do they do? And disguises his face. Hey, you put on your hat. You put on your shades. You even might even borrow your man's car. Adultery, fornication is planned. It takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. It just don't happen with the snap of a finger. Everybody understand that? That's right. So you work for towards that. You can't, I don't know what, you know what happened. 
the hell is this? One brother says to us, oh, I met your sister. She want me to teach you the Bible. All right, brother, bring it to the school. We'll teach you. No, 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 no. She want a private lesson. No, bro, stop, stop. There's no private lesson. No, no private lessons. Now, I know in his mind, he's saying, I'm a grown ass man. You don't tell me who I could teach you, who I can't teach. I said, brother, we're trying to help you. We're trying to help you. Satan is knocking at your door. So what happens? He goes to the house. She opens the door in a nightgown, a Victoria's Secret nightgown, as a matter of fact, with the edible underwear. Y'all know the type. <laughs> anyway, the Bible ends up under the bed, and they both end up on top of the bed. The next day, that next Sabbath, <laughs> I don't know what happened, bro. Oh, get your black behind out of here. You come back when you're ready. Get out! We told you! We warned you! The hell is this? The tears is going to manipulate us. Tears don't work on me. It might work on some Deacon Asaph or Deacon K or Bishop Kanai. Who else? Or the captains. They don't work. Maybe Laba too. Shemai. Captain Shemai. Yeah, work on Cap. <laughs> or Benjamin. Yeah. Tears work on them. They don't work on me. But my wife will tell you. <laughs> well, you all shut the hell up. <laughs> that don't work on me. I'll sit there looking right now. Oh, you crying? Oh, you feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you the story I put, uh, 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 remind me, Feast of Tabernacles, the crying game, the crying game. Don't let me forget. Where we at? Uh, we at Job. Oh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Yes. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You know what? Let's start up at 12. I like 12. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed lest he fall. That's you men and women that say Satan could never enter in through one of my lusts. You got 13 lusts Satan can enter in through. There's 13 doors he got. And if you're a homo, you got 23. Yeah, that is a hotel. He, I'm going to go through this door right here. You never expect that. You waiting for Satan to enter. There's no door. No door. Well, most of us ain't got a door that says pork. I don't know who really struggles eating pork or shrimp, unless you're Norbert's wife, but most of us don't struggle with that. Everything else, though, singles, I'm going to come through this door today, and if you block me on this door, I got another door over there. He got 13 doors. She got 23. I'm going to get through one of them, and you ain't going to see it coming, but you got to catch it. When it enters, you got to be... See, if you if you prayed up, studied up, prayed up, applying the scriptures, you're going to say, this is Satan. Satan is on me. Let me shake myself. Let me get this demon out of me. You'll know. But if you've been playing and dabbling in sin, he's going to get you unexpected. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Give me that. Where we at now? Verse 13. Yes. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. No temptation has taken hold on anybody listening, but such as is common to man. That goes, that's what they just said about Christ too. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Everything we go through, whether it's financial temptation, sexual temptation, drug temptation. Uh, help me out. Give me some more temptation. What? Covetousness. Covetousness. Give me some more temptations. Give me some more. Lust for power. Lust for power. That's another one that we rarely mention, but that's a good one. All these things are common to men. Read that again. And guess what? That spirit jumps on women, too. The Jezebel spirit has a lust for power. Right. Go ahead. Read that again. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. He's not going to allow you to be tempted above what you're able. I heard uh, Deacon Asaph in his class. He was talking about these dumb camps that say, the white man is going to hold you down and put a chimp, in, a, not chimp, a chip in you, and then God is going to put you to death because the white man forced something in your body. He was saying, that makes no sense. Anything would have to be, for God to judge us, would have to be what? Voluntary. Willing. Willful. Willful. Not, I'll bust you upside the head and put a piece of pork in your mouth. Now God's going to kill you because you ate the pork. That makes no sense. It makes no God-given sense. Bishop, and when you ask them, so what are you supposed to do if the white man is forcing you? They say, let him kill you. That's their answer. So why they didn't do that, they tell the people that with the uh, vaccine that was going around. Right. They didn't say that when everybody was saying people were losing their jobs, uh, couldn't go nowhere. They wasn't saying, uh, uh, giving that as a solution. 
That's how stupid they are. Exactly, exactly. Where we at, Cap? Uh, verse 13. Read again. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. So the way to escape, that's why we say study, pray, apply. Those three things, spa, study, pray, apply. Not only that, Fasting comes in, takes a part. Brothers and sisters, hey, pick up a call. Pick up a phone. Let's talk. Let's go over some scripture. Let's talk about what you're going through. The Lord always makes a way for you to escape. Always. That's why we're all here together. That's why it says how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let's talk about it. Okay, what's going on? What's happening? Okay, let's come to a solution. Let's fix this. Okay, everybody oh. understand that? There's always a way to escape. If it's lust, you look at, you're about to look at some porn, then your phone ring. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're about to hit it, and then bam, bam it's a brother. Like, damn. Now I pick up the phone. Hey, Shalom, Ak, Most High in Christ, what's going on? Hey, what you doing, bro? Nothing. You know damn well you're about to hit that porn site. And the Lord sends somebody to call and interrupt you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. From there, give me Wisdom of Solomon 4.12. The book, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness. For the bewitching of naughtiness. Naughtiness is another word for sin. We're bewitched in society with sin. Whether it's through the television, whether it's through our family members, whether it's through the friends we meet or the associates on our job. We are bewitched with sin. It's made to appear um, glorious. Read. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. It doth obscure. Obs to obscure something means it's not clear. Things that are honest means God's laws. Like, for example, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's clear. It's, I understand it. We understand it. But the bewitching of naughtiness says there's nothing wrong with an affair, an occasional affair. See, they don't call it adultery. They change the word. They say an affair. And you go, yeah. There's nothing wrong with having a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You go, yeah. But the Bible says wife. The Bible says husband. You go, mm, read it again. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. They say an abortion. You go, yeah, that's not the same thing. It's different. Read it again. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. The honest is God's law. Go ahead. And the wandering of concupiscence. The wandering of sexual sins. Doth undermine the simple mind. Doth undermine the simple. We're the simple minds. We're the simple. Okay. Like it says in uh, 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 Psalms. How long, uh, Proverbs, how long you simple ones. Bishop, how yes. they normalize abortion now, they call it plan B. Right, right. That just means killing your child another way. But they put blind, plan B on it so you feel there's nothing wrong with it. They obscured it. Right, exactly. Okay, from there, Wisdom of Solomon 9, 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 15. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. Start at 14. Start at 14. I like that one. Verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Why? Because we each got, how many demons we got, brothers? 13 demons in us. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Go ahead. And our devices are but uncertain. Uh-huh. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. The body that we live in, this flesh, it presses down the soul that's within us. Go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind. This that, earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind. Go ahead. That muses upon many things. That muses. We think about a lot of things, but this earth, this flesh that we're in, it weighs us down. It causes us, it helps cause us to sin. It puts us in that sin state. That's why the Lord said he's going to change our stony heart to flesh. Right. He's going to change it. He has to change us because the body that we're in is prone to sin. That's what Romans 7 is so heavy. Give me that Romans 7, 18 to 24 real quick. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That's what we just read. That's what we just read in Wisdom of Solomon 9. Go ahead. For to will is present with me. To will, to do God's will, it's always present with me, Paul says. Go ahead. But how to perform that which is good, 
I find out. But how to perform that, which is good, I find out. Meaning, how to walk 100%? He said, I'm struggling. I got a problem. Okay? For the good that I would. The I, good that I would, meaning the commandments. I do not. I find myself messing up. Go ahead. But the evil which I would not. But the evil that I don't want to do, breaking God's commandments. That I do. That I end up doing. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it. Paul said, it ain't me, damn it. He said, I'm sick of it ain't me. It's the demons within me. This I got Satan on me. Go ahead. But sin that dwelleth in me. See that? But sin that dwelleth in me. 13 demons. The average person. Some of y'all got 23. Was that it? 121. Uh, no, that's all I want. I just wanted to show you that. From there, give me First Peter 5 and 8. Now, Paul's battle, let me say it in case anybody getting simple. Paul's battle was mental. He was always fighting spiritually in his mind back and forth, back and forth. So read that. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see that right there? Satan's always looking to see who he, he may devour. When you look at animal kingdom, for example, the lion don't run out generally to the herd. They wait to see that one, uh, what's some of them animals called? Buffalo. Buffaloes or gazelles, that one that lingers behind. Wildebeest. Okay. The one that lingers in the back. And you know what that goes with? Give me that back. We read it earlier in Jude. The one about uh, these are they would separate themselves. That's who Satan looks for. The book of Jude, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves. Because the lion in the jungle, he's hiding behind the bushes. He's just looking. He sees a whole herd of wildebeest or gazelles, whatever, a whole lot of them. Then he sees that one way over there, just walking slow. Read again. These be they who separate themselves. Mm -hmm. Sensual. Having not, sensual means emotional. Go ahead. Sensual, having not the spirit. So that one right there doesn't have the spirit. I'm going to get that one. So that's you, brother, or you, sister, that got that, that emotional spirit, and you, you, I'm going to separate from them. I'm going to do my own. I'm going to be by myself. Okay. Satan going to get you. He's going to enter in through one of those 13 doors in your head. Then you go, how did, how did it happen? I don't see how Satan got me. Okay. Bishop. Yes. The spirit that they lack is to know that there's safety in numbers. Right. Okay. And a lot of y'all don't understand that. And you think that's why you see a lot of people on YouTube that hate the truth. They say, don't join no camp. Be by yourself. Okay. Meanwhile, they still watching us online, but they're by themselves. They didn't learn no truth by themselves, but they just got that hateful spirit of not wanting to be in the body. So now we're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacles. Everybody had a good time Feast of Tabernacles? Yes, well, all praises to the Lord. Let's get a Lord. I hand for that thing. I had a great time. You had a great time, Lama? With the ASAP, you had a great time? We had a great time. Oh, man. Bishop, it yes. Was, I keep saying I don't know how you do it, sir. But you had the energy, bro. I, I was an ever-ready bunny rabbit. And yeah. what he meant was... We woke up every morning to sit down and go over scriptures in peace, undisturbed, sisters bringing us food, Bishop Kanai making sure we have breakfast, lunch, dinner, making sure everybody ate, just family. Things you cannot do in filthy, disgusting New York, we did in the confines of the privacy of family, and that's what it felt like, family. You wake up, you see the kids playing, you're hearing shalom, you're seeing everybody with fringes, you're not hearing no gunshots, you're not seeing no syringes on the floor, you're not hearing police sirens, just waking up, sitting down, and going over scriptures on how we can build the kingdom of God. Yes, right. Hey, all praises, all praises. Now on another note, when you get to the book of Jude, I think it's Jude. Give me Jude. I want the one that says, these are spots. Verse 12. Yes. The book of Jude, verse 12. I hate to bust your bubble, but go ahead. These are spots in your feast of charity. This, the, our feast of charity is the Sabbath and God's other high holy days. Those are feasts of charity. 
These are spots in your feast of charity. Go ahead. When they feast with you. Uh-huh. Feeding themselves without fear. Feeding themselves without fear. They don't give a damn. You got certain men, certain women that don't care about this truth, but they're among us. Go ahead. Clouds they are without water. Clouds they are without water. They have no understanding of scripture. Carried about of winds. Carried about of winds of doctrines. Go ahead. Trees whose fruit withereth mm -hmm. without fruit. You don't have the fruits of the spirit. Twice dead. You was dead in the world, and you're dead when you come into this truth. Go ahead. Plucked up by the roots. So now I just want to talk about it a little bit right there. <sighs> During the feast, we, we had a few spots of liars, deceivers, and RV burners. Put the first picture up. I put it in order. I sent it in order. It's a, uh, Put it so I can see it. I'll tell you if it's the first one. Uh, okay, you have nothing in order the way I sent it. Bottom, second row, bottom, over. Put that up. Oh, okay. This was a lovely sister. You could blow it up big. I, I, I covered her face up pretty much, pretty good. Who registered for Feast of Tabernacles in New Jersey? However, she didn't go to the tri-state one. She didn't want to be with y'all. She decided I could get more money if I drive to Alabama and sell some clothes. So she drove almost 17 to 18 hours. Give me the next picture. Nope. No. I don't need y'all to I need y'all to pay attention when as I'm speaking. <sighs> Yeah, open the file. Let me look at it, because I see I don't know what you're doing. Give me the second picture, right next to the one you already clicked. Okay, that's her. Look, she's very, if you see, very lovely. You, you see, you go, wow, she's a pretty sister. Brothers, don't be deceived, okay? Give me the video now. Give me the video. So, and don't play it yet until, put it on the screen. No, not that one. I want the closer one. There's another one that was on there. It's closer up when I liked it better. Okay. So while we're going over scriptures at night, we hear a strange noise. And we hear children scream. Ah! And we're like, what? We jump up. And Bishop Kanai grabs his stomach. He lifts it. <laughs> and he takes off. Cause he had he had his he had this thing where he was cooking. We everybody thought that was what it was stuff. So play the video. This is what we saw. Bishop can I outran everybody. Dude, what the heck? Lord, you can't even see that. What the hell? I hope I pray nobody's in there. I, I pray nobody's in there. Oh so God. this is the sister's RV. That's on fire. She had a ton of clothes to sell. Ton of clothes to sell to the people. She again, she was not supposed to be there. She was, she registered for Jersey, for the tri-state. She figured she could get paid in Alabama. So I, we asked Deacon Laba, we asked Deacon Malika, does she have a good report in Israel? What'd y'all say? No. They said she shouldn't even be, she don't believe. You, you remember, that's the same thing in Passover she did. Trying to sneak someone in. Yeah, uh, right. her, her boyfriend or her, whatever she called. So her RV caught, so what she, so she, when brothers asked her, how does happen, how does fire ca catch her, how to catch her fire your RV? She said incense. She said she was lighting incense and it dropped in the RV. And as I heard it, I'm like, I light incense all the time. And it falls on the floor and... I never that ne a raging fire like that. So the fire truck comes. Fire truck man, fireman says, you had wires hooked from your engine to the, you know, in the, the what is it called? The side thing, the electrical thing. I forgot what it's called. In the, in the, the fuse, is it a fuse box? Every electrical pole, you know, every campsite you got that. She was jump starting her vehicle with that. And the RV went up in flames. You can't make this stuff up. And so, go ahead. Bishop, I don't even think y'all understand the extent of the fire. I was with uh, 
Officer Tobias and Officer Jalil, about 20 minutes away walking distance because the place was huge. So we were on the other side of the water and we were talking and laughing and listening to music and a little kid points up and goes, I don't think the fire's supposed to be that high. We all turned and we look, we jumped in our cars, I had security, everybody racing over there. Okay, so uh, Bishop Kanai, was Bishop uh, Nathaniel already told me, don't worry, it's not uh, Bishop Kanai stuff, because we thought it was Kanai stuff, because we're thinking that's the only place where we know that there's extensive fire for cooking and food preparation. So we jutted across the lake, across the pond, security, we all racing over there, only to see us this woman's merchandise being set on fire and burning. You can't make this stuff. Give can't me, make it up. Give me the next picture. I want the after effect. There we go. Now, that's the front. Go ahead. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, you guys know this back there. There's a car. It's showing you the Lord keep the fire in one place. Yep. There was a lot of cars surrounded. It stayed in one place. I'll tell you. So when Satan, you think Satan can enter. Oh, Satan can enter in. When you sisters start being deceitful and dishonest, and she didn't even pay to come to the thing. Everybody putting money down. Right, she didn't pay for Black Wall Street. That's what she tried to get into. Give me the next one. Was there more? Was there more? I need y'all to help me. Were there more pictures? Because I'm not looking at it. Okay. This was horrible. This was terrible. And we thank the most high. Nobody got injured. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got killed. I'll tell you. It was, it was, it was a scary scene. You know what I'm Because... You see, when, when your spirit ain't right and you're rolling in the wrong spirit and Satan enter into you, you could cause people life. Mm -hmm. That's why we read in Job, these are spots in your feast. Some of you all is spots in, in, in the feast days when we come together and so forth and you all don't supposed to be there. You know you don't believe. You know you're here just to make some money. You understand? You know you don't want to be there. And the thing about it is that the Lord going to shine the light on you. And some of you are going to be so stupid enough to not to see it. In I don't know why this happened. Right. It wasn't my fault. Uh, it, uh, listen, the Lord shined the light on you. Something ain't right with you. That's how things is operate. Okay? <laughs> Bishop, I'll give him a perfect example. How many of you read the story of Achan in the Babylonian garment? Show hands. See, a lot of you didn't read it. You understand that instructions were given to Israel on how to go to war. And he broke those instructions and men started dying. Okay? And when the leaders started to complain to God, what's going on? You said we would have the victory. He said there was a thief among you. God wouldn't even tell him who the thief was. He said you need to search from house to house and figure out who the thief was. Then they found out it was Achan. They got him to confess. And God said the instructions were take him, his wife, his children, his cattle, all his stuff and stone them with fire, and then stone them, and then set them on fire. That's how God get down. So don't just think that we're all going to come together and everything is going to work. Sometimes the Lord will allow things to fall apart to allow us to know that we need to tighten things up. And this was one of those cases. We saw a lot of, we were trying to be family and brotherly and loving and overlooking certain things. But what did we learn from this? We got to tighten things up. Because you got people trying to come and be around us who don't need to be around us. They don't care about Feast of Tabernacles. They don't care about the unity and, and the camaraderie and what we came there for. They coming to get paid. That's all it is. They coming to get paid. And the Lord don't like that. Show that next video. I think that was closer up. There's no sound on it? Okay. So y'all can see, this. It, it was a raging fire. And the things around it, I don't, I don't think, it, nothing got burned around it, right? Other vehicles and stuff, nothing got, just her, just her stuff got burned out, burned up. All right. There were tents everywhere. Yes. There was tents, there was families, there was everybody's stuff, cars everywhere. But the fire was controlled. There was a spirit in the fire. The angels got the order, only burn this right here. Right. Are you sure? Yes, Lord. 
<laughs> Only burn this right here. So the next day, myself, Bishop Kanai, Deacon Asaph, I, were you there? We had a meeting, it was a bunch of us, captains were out there with these women to find out exactly what happened. And brothers, let me tell y'all, when you talk to women, what is, when they get busted, what is the first thing they tend to do? Right. Yes, that's exact. Here go. <laughs> I'm sitting next to Bishop Kanai. You better not fool for this shit. You better not fool for it. He goes, stop. Don't waste your time crying. We just don't, stop, stop it. Just tell us what happened. Well, well, well I charged this sister uh, $350, and I charged her $200, and I charged her $150. This one sister got paid off all the other sisters. What did he say? How much? $1,500 for $600 fee. You can't make this stuff up. And the sisters would say, you, I paid $350? What? You only paid $150? What the hell is this? It was crazy. I'll tell you, it, it was madness. It was madness. Hey, let me see the next pictures. Don't just put it on the screen. I want to look at it so you don't mess me up like y'all be messing up uh, when ASAP be calling for stuff Friday Night Raw. Let me look. They always mess up. I don't know if it's this group. ASAP, who does for you? That ain't them? Whoever, I'll be like, man, I'm like, who the hell is doing this for ASAP's class? Not that one. I don't want that one. Can I look at the pictures myself and I'll tell you? Because Okay. What I want to look at is, now don't get offended, I want the man sitting on the toilet. I want the man sitting on the toilet. Now this ain't us, this, not, this is just something I saw on Google. So I thought I would preface this next story with this picture. Put it up. Sisters, the man sitting on the toilet, brothers, come on. Sisters, I'm going to help you all out here. When you're taking a shower, but nature calls, you leave the shower and you go on the toilet. Why am I bringing this nasty stuff up? Give me the next picture of what the sisters did. Don't mess me up over there. Oh, sisters, not brothers. Brothers, y'all good. You can't make this up. Give me the next one. Give me the next one. Give me the next one. Give me the next. Yes. You nasty, black, evil women. Some of y'all are disgusting. Now, brothers, and the, the sisters was the one cleaning the women's bathroom. The sisters were saying how disgusting the sisters were. You daughters of Sarah. I ain't Titus too. You nasty, sum them up. Anyway, okay, take it off the screen. Take it off the screen. Then brothers, they want to get married and say, I want you to go down on me. I ain't put my damn mouth on you, you nasty son of a. <laughs> go take a bath. Go wash. The hell, who raised you to do that? <laughs> that is just nasty. Am I making it up? No. I'm not making nothing up. I'm not lying. I'm telling y'all you're nasty. What else happened out there? How, how do you take a dump in the bathroom shower? Come on, man. You showing and you just feel a kind of, you just, like, how you do that? And this is this is the female bathroom. This is how nasty they are. This is how nasty. You remember, how many of you have children? How quick you change the pamper. You love your child, but you don't want to smell it. You change the pamper real quick and dispose of it. The woman... Doodle -doo right when she's washing her ass. The smell alone should make her say, you know what? What's the quickest way to dispose of it? Sit on the toilet, flush it. But if you don't feel comfortable taking a dump right there when you're going to wash your ass, you ain't got no class. <laughs> nasty, just nasty. Now give me the picture of the two cute sisters, the two cute girls, two cute. Okay. Okay, these were the next two. Now, these are teenagers. You might be asking, well, what did these two lovely, adorable girls do? Well, I'll help you out. A sister gets up from her tent, and she goes, hey, where's my car? Where's my, my car was right here. These two cute little adorable girls went on a joyride in the sister's car. Car thieves. You can't make this stuff up. 
Give me the next, let me see, what's the next picture? Let me look at it, put it on the screen. Let me look. Let me look. Put it on the screen, let me look at it. Oh, 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 oh. Give me the one with the pretty sister, sister three, I think it says, sister three. Put it on the screen. Here's another sister, brothers. You see this lovely sister here? She came from heaven. Daughter of Sarah. She's listening to Deacon Malachi's uh, Sabbath class about holy hoes. So something in her just really, really, Satan just came in through one of the doors, one of the 13 doors. He said, I'll go in through this door. And she gets cut. She gets so upset. Give me the next one of the leg. Leg. No, no, give me, give me the words. I want all the words. No leg, no leg. Okay, you got it there. Just leave it there. So she gets cut. She puts, she cuts herself. Whatever much I cut myself last night with my machete. And I'm thinking I'm just losing control mentally. Because though they look not that deep, it's still bleeding today. And I should just check myself into a mental health. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. Because I don't want to hurt myself, but this definitely has triggered some old behaviors of my insecurities. Now, brothers, leave that right there. I'm going to tell you something. There was a brother who was warned. These sisters that come in, let them learn. He's on FaceTime talking about, show me your breasts. Now show me what you got. I'm going to show you mine. I'm going to show you mine. Ooh, 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 ooh. Little, and we, we, threw, we put them out. Now the sister does this. Brother, you would have been married to this thing right here. Or in and out of the psych wards. If she on med sisters, if y'all on medication, take your medication. Now put the words up. Take your, some of y'all need white man therapy. I'm telling y'all. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. Give me the words. So it says, sister, I took the names out. because I'm not really trying to embarrass anybody. Sister so-and-so sent messages to sister, blankety blank, stating that she was cut by the Sabbath class, holy hoes. She took her conviction so far as to cut herself multiple times on her leg with her machete. Why does she have a machete? I, I don't have a machete. Anyway, this incident was reported to Captain Arie and Deacon Laba, who advised that the sister learned from home indefinitely. Some of y'all need therapy. And I'm not making fun of you, but it's, it's a reality that we live in. What are you going to say, Laba? I'm going to blame Malachi. <laughs> yeah, blame Malachi. You can <laughs> that take was that a good class, the, uh, the Hey, listen. When these scriptures come forth, come forth is not to destroy you all, it's to heal you all. Those of you all that take it personal and take it as, oh, you trying to destroy me, and then you go hurt yourself. Listen, you come around us with that foolishness, oh, I want to hurt me. Yo, you got to go. You stay online. You know, we're going to go to the hospital and admit yourself or something. That's, that's you understand right. what I'm saying? Do that. You understand? Yeah, For real. But, but, but understand, when these scriptures come forth, come forth is to heal you. It's not, it. You know, something wrong with you. You had Satan on you. Mm -hmm. That sister. Yeah, you had Satan on you, sister. The, so The scriptures a, and the class is to make you aware that you're in sin. Not to find out you're in sin, then cut yourself and commit more sin. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. That's all you did. You just add sin unto sin by saying, okay, I just, I'm aware now that I'm a whore, but I'm going to cut myself some more. That makes no sense. That's a sin to sit down and mutilate yourself. Leviticus 19, 28. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. Why were they making cuttings in their flesh back then? Because they were emotional. Because of this. Read on. For the dead. Because sometimes people die, you get emotional. So you afflict yourself with pain. God said that that's unlawful. You don't cut yourself, mutilate yourself, what they call it self-mutilation, and say that you're doing this to bring yourself closer to God. You are distancing yourself from God. So the scriptures are not working, and you have to leave. There are some people here we cannot help. So you have to leave. Like the bishop said, go, go to the hospital, uh, get treatment from the doctors there, the scriptures can't help you. You got to go. Because after you harm yourself, you're going to harm somebody else here, and then your family's going to say that we made you do it. Yep. Yeah, man, go, go, go where you belong. White men therapy. 
That's what yeah. you want. Since the word of God had come out, the brother trying to help you exactly. from your stupidity. But now look what you do, sister. Right. Yeah. So we know the Bible answers all things. That's what the scriptures say. But when it when it cannot help you, that's because you are of an unbelieving spirit. That's where the problem comes in. Give me the next picture. Wait, let me look at it. Put it on the screen so you don't mess me up. Uh, give me my best friend, best friend from the GMS group. Put him up on the screen. That's not okay. This yeah, this is this is my best friend. His name is Vernon Brown Tahar. Now I didn't put this together. I just laughed when I saw it, so I thought I'd share it with you. Since the deacons were going over it last night. It says, in 20 years as, read that, Zakai. Zakai, I'm sorry, yeah. Zakai. <laughs> Zakai, I'm sorry. Shout out. Shout out to Zakai. Go ahead. All right. In 20 years as leader of GMS, Tahar Ben Israel has been to over 350 strip clubs. Now, I don't know if he's been to over 350 strip clubs, so I won't, I can't either affirm or deny that. I can't, I don't know nothing about that. Go ahead. Has built absolutely nothing of significance. That is true. He also, <laughs> he also spearheaded the doctrine of rape and underage sex. That is true. Tahar will leave behind a legacy that any repented man would abhor. Now you may be saying to yourself, oh, you're slandering him. He doesn't teach rape. His men don't teach rape. They don't teach about underage sex. Give me Deacon Abiel's video, please, from last night. And I think the time should be on there, the timestamp. I want y'all to pay close attention. This is, this is some evil stuff. Now, and, and the reason I'm going to this, because some of y'all like to window shop. Men and women, you all over the place. So once we find out that you believe this type of doctrine, we're going to throw you out. Go ahead. In, I'm telling you, we can really go in. But we've let stuff go because you know what? We're progressing. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. But watch this. Listen to what these, these niggas say. Exactly. Yeah. King Mangina. Yeah, King Mangina. Nick the dickhead snake. Get that. We, we about to get. Give me um, Peter, man. Oh, oh. Two. I think it's two. Let's do it. Yeah, two. Take it, Peter. He don't know what he got to do. Take it back. Take it back. Oh, listen, yeah, I'm listen. sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, he's I'm I'm sorry. I'm telling you, these I'm dudes. Sorry. I'm sorry. They don't know the scriptures I'm sorry. at all. I'm sorry. That's a move. We about to get that. <laughs> Give me that <laughs> job. Dude. Get up, man. Oh, man. Give me that. <laughs> John 316. <laughs> Give John 316. <laughs> what? Get on with that. Go ahead. All that shit, man. They don't get fucking put to death, man. The Lord's going to kill them, man. Get Nate fucking Satan. Yeah, I'm not naming it that snake. Nate the fucking snake. Get here. King Magic. Yeah, King Mangina. Nate the dickhead snake. Get that. We, we about to get. Give me um, Peter, man. Oh, uh, uh, two. I think it's two and five. Yeah, two. <laughs> second Peter, second chapter. Yeah, your daughter gonna get raped. Give me the whole second chapter. Y'all hear? <laughs> take it back, take it back. Y'all hear that? Don't do 10, just a, a little bit. Play it. Two. I think it's two and five. Yeah, two. <laughs> Second Peter, second chapter. Yeah, your daughter gonna get raped, Nate. Go ahead. That's what he said. Tell her to scream. Hey, she gonna scream. Go ahead. So <laughs> you play, play, it play, it play it again. Play it again. I missed it, D. I'm, you know Did y'all hear the evil? Hold on, hold on. The Did y'all hear the evil? His mouth. The nigga with mittens oh, on. Hey, hey, talking hey, shit. IT, I'm talking to you. What's wrong with this group over there? The Negroes is speaking. All, now, if anybody gonna hurt my come to the family, come on down. I welcome you. And you will meet Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai <laughs> that night. I'm telling you. I, I, there's, there's some things you gotta be willing to go to jail for, and that's one of them. Right. I will go to jail for you to meet your maker. Starting with their elder Tahar, Gabar, what's some other clowns' names? Arim Lob. Arim Lob. Rakar. Rakar. The other monkey looking one exactly. used to with foam coming out of his mouth when he teach. Now, they're on video saying they want to rape my daughter. That's what we're going to just store this video because anything, they all, if I don't get them, 
I pray the Lord there's a, there'll be a line of people waiting up. if you don't get him, Bishop. But to, if you gotta go for him, that just we not as bad as we say we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. You, you could just sit back and relax. They will get taxed. <laughs> All right, so take that okay. off the screen. Take that off the screen. Give me the next picture. And this is why we say you brothers that come from other, I always tell Captain uh, Amaziah, because he somebody will call and say, I'm with this camp. Can I come join y'all? He's quick to say, yeah, come on down. I say, no. You don't know what kind of spirit this dude got on him. Give me the picture of the GMS member that was with us years ago. Right there. Read that. Zakai, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> was ordered to watch from home and see a therapist in January 2022 for confessing he was dealing with a rape spirit and porn. So, okay, take it off the screen. These brothers from other camps, they have spirits on, they have demons on them. Now you want to bring them in here with us. Y'all don't know what kind of spirits these dudes are. What's in the back of their head? I want to rape her. I want to do this. Stuff. I want to do that. These spirits got to go. We're teaching the commandments so that you can purge the demon. But some demons can't be purged if you have an unbelieving spirit. You need white man therapy. We're going to have to have you stay home. Watch online. Everybody understand that? I hope I'm making myself clear. Right. Hey, you, and, hey and, we, we have to take these things very serious. Brothers, y'all understand because the reason why one of these evil Negroes gonna do some stupid. And when they do it stupid, who gonna be blamed? The ministry. That's right. Okay, the ministry gonna be blamed. Okay, so we have brothers take these things serious. You see brothers, brothers talking sideways, rape, murder, any kind, yo, take these things very serious. But the scripture said that we should be blameless, that the men should be not blamed. But guess what? Them spirits, those 13 spirits, and all them spirits that that our that we all have inside of us, guess what? Say and enter into you, and you do some dumb stuff, guess what? The ministry going to be blamed. You understand? Always remember that. So when you see brothers come with foolishness, talking certain things, you got to blow they spot up. You have to blow they spot up. Brothers come up with some... Rape doctrine or, or or whatever that's against God laws. You all got to bring it up, man. And that dude got to go. We ain't playing with none of y'all. We are not gonna allow Satan to use y'all to destroy us, okay? Because that's what he's gonna do eventually, and he gonna get some of y'all. Some of y'all will be used to try to paint a bad image of us, because that's what it's gonna come to. But we ain't gonna make it easy for him. We ain't gonna make it easy for Satan. And it's every last one of you brothers' job, every evil Negro that is in our UIC that ain't trying to change, you got to call them out and let them go, man. Yeah, we going to get rid of every last one of them. We don't care about numbers. It's not about numbers, brothers. You understand? We about, we want the brothers and sisters that want to do right. Okay? Those of you all that, those are the ones that we want amongst us. Okay? Quality, not quantity. And a lot of those dudes join GMS for one reason and one reason only. They hate the bishop and they hate IUIC. So anything that, that look like I showed y'all last night, if he make up a lie on Monday, he'll watch the camps, see somebody say something and twist it, and then give all his men make videos, orders to make videos against us. It's a, a classic MO of how he operates. And like uh, Deacon Abiel said, we got a lot more. Don't play yourself, bro. We got a lot more. We just leave you alone because you're a nobody. When you say stuff like this to incite violence in the weak, simple niggas you got around you, that's when you get dragged and your face get fixed. That's right. From there. Now, the next thing that happened at Feast of Tabernacles, uh, uh, Captain Hannah and I knows about it. Now, I didn't get the report yet, but I did hear about it. You may know what I'm talking about. About the brother that wanted some firewood. You know about the firewood? Was you in California? Yes. Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. Brother from Sacramento wanted some firewood. So he goes to get the firewood. And security, it's late at night, security says, hey, what are you doing? He takes the wood, jumps in his car, does a donut, and speeds off and crashes into a water pipe. <laughs> you didn't hear about that? You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Brother, we're not going to let you freeze out there. You with us. We're going to make sure you're warm. You don't got to jump in your car, do a donut, and crash into the water pipe. 
You can't make this stuff up. I'm like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> that worldly thieving spirit came back on him and he realized he forgot that he was with the church and they can help him right so tyrone jumped back on him and said steal it nigga steal it <laughs> don't ask him y'all have to bring him back take your time stay still tyrone we're gonna give you the wood for free yeah, yeah, <laughs> after yeah, the yeah. angel made him crash his car yeah, yeah. now your guys know what moses have to go through mm -hmm. Get that in Ephesians 4.28. This is for you, brothers. That may have a door. One of your 13 doors might be stealing. You don't have to steal among us. We're going to help you. Ephesians 4.28, please. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. You hear that, brothers? If you used to be a thief, you don't need to steal no more. Go ahead. But rather let him labor. Work, get a job, become an entrepreneur. Go ahead. Working with his hands, the thing which is good. Why? That he may have to give to him that needed. Because there may be brothers that and sisters that come behind you that need, and you'll be able now to assist them, to help them. That's our job, brother. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. That is our job. Now, how to overcome? How to overcome? Well, the first thing to overcome these 13 or 23 demons that we have is, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 10, 12. I just want to meditate on that just a second. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. See that? So that's the first, you got to understand. Take heed unto yourselves, okay? Lest you that think you sit, because you'll be saying, I'm good. I, I keep the commandments. I'm all right in the name of the Lord. I'm good. But then it said what? Read it again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take it heed, lest he fall. Take heed, lest he fall, because Satan can enter in any way. The place you least expect it, he could enter in. Okay? Give me that in uh, uh, Corinthians 15 and 3. Or I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. I'm sorry. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. So we brothers and sisters, you got to examine yourselves. Some of y'all come up to us and say, Bishop, what do you see in me? Brother, sister, I only know what you show me. Mm. How many times do I see you? Maybe once every few weeks. I really don't know you. Okay. I may know your name. I know your face, but I only meet your representative. And what I mean by that, you might be a grimy evil negro pornography sucking whatever but you don't show me that part you only show me the shalom most high in christ bless that's all i see so read it again examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith you brothers and sisters you have to examine yourselves you know you better than anybody you know what's in the nappy nappy dappy dugout in the back you know what's back there i don't know what's back there behind the curtain you know what's behind the curtain you know, if you got a rape spirit you're battling with, a murderous spirit, a lying spirit, a thief spirit, a porn spirit, a sodomite spirit, a drug spirit, an alcoholic spirit, only you know. Read that again. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. You got to prove your own selves. What does that mean? Prove yourself that you believe this truth by keeping the commandments. Now, hey, hold that. Give me the one with Philippians. I think it's 212. Not in my presence only. That one. We coming back to Corinthians. The book of Philippians, chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. You see that? Read it again. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as my, not in not as in my presence only, not in my presence only, meaning this what I see right here in IUIC, this is in my presence only. But read, but now much more in my absence. What about when I'm not around? What about when the deacons and the captains are not around you? When you're at home alone, when you when you're at home with your wife, your kids, what are you like? Are you body slamming your wife? Are you uh, uh, bunting your child across the room? Disrespecting leadership. Disrespecting one, one leadership. One person told me their spouse was like, I don't give a damn if you tell them niggas. And they'll be in here talking about multi in Christ bless. But when the spouse said they was going to report the behavior, they was like, they, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. They don't got their mouth when they're here. But when in the house, 
They're like a lion in the house. That's why the scriptures say not to be that way in your house. You're a monster in your house. And you got a whole act when you come up in here trying to run game on us. So that so read it again, Cap. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Y'all understand that? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't do it for you. The deacons, the captains, the elder women cannot do it for you. This is your fight. You got to fight through this. Uh, there's a story. I always tell a story. And it, I saw it many, many years ago. It was um, two eggs. I think they were eagles or so. Was, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, the little, it was a little white girl and she wanted to help the, the bird come out of the shell. And the, her, the farmer said, no, the, the bird needs to struggle. The bird needs to fight its way out the shell. So the little girl says, no, I want to help this one. So she helps the bird out of the shell. The bird that she helped come out of the shell grew up weaker than the one that struggled and fought to get out. OK, so I pondered on that. And that's how this whole life is. The most high. Um, we, we got these demons on us. We got to fight our way through it. And the key is we got to strive to enter the straight gate. If 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 you are always looking for the easy way out, you will never grow into your true character, who you truly are in your spirit. What are you going to say? You know what's so heavy with that, Bishop? Paul said the same thing. Um, let me get that scripture where, where he said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Because Paul wanted the easy way out. Paul went to the Lord and Paul fasted. You know, and, and he said, Lord, just take my demons away from me. Make it easy for me. I don't want to fight. You know, and let me show you all what. And let me show you how, how the Lord dealt with, how, how, what the Lord told Paul. You know, it's go, it goes right into what the bishop said. The only way you become stronger is by fighting. That's the only way you become stronger, and it builds character. You know, read that for me. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 10. Sorry. Verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Read that again. And he said unto me, my grace is no, read sufficient. Read up, put up. All right. Uh, eight? Yeah. For this thing? Yeah. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. So Paul had, had a thorn in the flesh he was dealing with, and he went to the Lord three times, fast and pray for the Lord to take it away from him. That's the easy way. The easy, the easy way is the Lord just taking away your demons from you, okay? You ain't got to battle no more. Read on. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what is the Lord saying here? He said, listen, my grace, my mercy, that's enough for you. Me having mercy on you, you could repent if you do fall. You could repent. That is sufficient for you. I'm not going to make it easy. You're going to fight. Okay? You're going to fight until... I return. That's it. Okay, understand that, brothers. Did Satan going to keep coming for you? He going to be coming over and he going to leave and he going to come back. And some demons that you have in you, it's not going to go away. I just want you all to understand. It's not going to go away. Them demons, you have to subdue them. You understand? You cannot give in to them. Okay? It's the same thing Paul was dealing with. Satan keep coming for Paul, keep coming for him, and he keep battling. Okay, that was Satan keep coming for Paul, and Paul like, damn, why, why this is so hard for me? Lord, take it from me. And the Lord said, no, I ain't taking it from you. You're going to keep fighting. Right. You know, so brothers keep fighting. Okay, when Satan come for you, keep fighting. You know. Hey, that's all we can do. Keep fighting. Watch this. Go back to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. So you brothers and sisters, you got to sit down and take stock of yourself. What demons am I battling? Out of these 13 in Mark 7, 21 and 22 that we read about, which ones am I dealing with? Which ones am I battling with? If you got to 23 from the Sodomite side, you got to say, which ones am I dealing with? Which ones is my struggle? Write it down. Get scriptures that associate with those particular struggles and meditate and pray and fast. Okay, from there, give me uh, Mark 9, 29. The book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 29. 
And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So Christ says some demons can only come out by prayer and fasting. That's some. That's not everything. Not here on earth with us. Okay. This type of demon that he was dealing with, he said this type. Because I let you know there's different types of spirits. Some are stronger than others. He said this type only comes out by prayer and fasting. Everybody understand that? So that's why we, we have, how many times we fast now? Twice a month now, right? Twice, Twice a month. It is voluntary. You ain't got to do it if you don't want to do it. It's to help you, though. Okay. And, and Bishop. Yes. You didn't expound now like the way you expounded at Tabernacle. So I just want to add a little thing that you left out now as you're explaining it. The Bishop gave the analogy of some of you who come into Israel United in Christ new. You're suffering financial hardships. You need a place to live. You're battling with stuff in your relationships. And right away, our premise was, okay, we're going to help you out. We're going to help you with this. We're going to help you with the money. That is wrong. Because you just got here and you got spirits on you. And if we help you, as soon as you come through the door, guess what you'll never do? Grow up. Some of you come here broken and we right away want to help you. Oh, this brother don't got a place to live. He don't have this. He, instead of giving you other alternatives where you got to work it out, where your faith will be tested, we immediately jump in and interfere with what the most high, the conditions he set up for you. We ain't doing that no more. Because some of you who we've helped, you're the same ones on YouTube now speaking evil against us. And we realize you was a nigga at the door and we picked you up without, getting you, without letting you get cleaned up by the most high first. So the bishop gave examples, examples. It was more extensive the way he explained it when we were at Feast of Tabernacle, but it resonated with me because now I remember all the people we tried to help that's talking shit about us now and disrespecting us. They never overcame. Now watch this. This is proof. Go to Luke chapter 22, verse 31. This is proof for you people that's getting offended because someone typed last night when I came to the school, they were not friendly to me. I know what you want. You want that Christian experience. Everybody hugging you and everybody being your friend and give me your number and I'm going to call you. No, sit your ass right there and learn scriptures first. That's what you need to do when you come through those doors. This is proof. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. The book of Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Satan is going to put you through a trial. Look what Christ's response was. Read on. But I have prayed for thee. Y'all don't want to hear that when y'all come through the door. We're going to send up prayers for you that you're homeless. You're going through uh, uh, domestic violence. You're going through your financial issues. Y'all don't want to hear our prayers. You want immediate help. The same way Simon wanted to hear from Christ. Dun, da, 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 don't worry, I'm, I'm going to help you. No, Christ said, all I could do is pray for you. Read on. That thy faith fail not. Because all of you are going to, your faith is going to be tested. And the most I send some of you here homeless, no job. Your financial situation messed up. Your family attacking you. Your marriage falling apart. And we interfere and then we pay the price. So that ain't happening no more. The same way Christ said, all I could do is pray for you that your faith fail not. Read on. And when thou art converted. Then you go through that conversion process because you fought on your own. Just like the bird that fought to get out the shell on their own. The bird was converted and became stronger. You become stronger through your faith and your trials. Read on. Strengthen thy brethren. Now you're an asset to the body instead of a liability. That's some good stuff. I hope y'all pay attention to that. That was some good stuff right there. You might not like it, but it's true and necessary for each of us. Give me Psalms 55 and 17. And I sent y'all, uh, IT, I sent y'all two more pictures. So at the end, we'll discuss it real quick. The book of Psalms chapter 55 and verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. And cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So that right there, evening, morning, and at noon. So myself, the bishops, the deacons, the captains, uh, my family, and I, I believe many security, right? I think, uh, Abiel, y'all post that also, right? You don't, Do you know what I'm talking about? You look confused. Yes. We're definitely putting ourselves in the habit of praying the three times a day like the scriptures say. It's all for our benefit. It's to help us get through the demonic stages that we get. Everybody understand that? Absolutely. Give me a Mark's, I mean Matthew 6 verse 5. Matthew 6 verse 5. 
Yes. What y'all missing is the prayer is a sign of what? What? Your faith. Your faith that things are going wrong. You're not thinking about stealing. You're not thinking about fighting somebody. You're not think the first thing you're doing is crying out to the most high. You're acknowledging him. So that's why you got to get in that spirit. Why do we fall? Because we turn our backs on him. We didn't acknowledge him. We went to other gods. We went to other sources. We went down to Egypt. It's written all through the scriptures. Woe unto them that go. Some of y'all will go to the government. Some of y'all will go to, and I'm not saying if you need the government assistance, uh, don't do it. But some of y'all will put these things first. To tell you about Asa, he was diseased in his feet and he went to the physician before the Most High. He was in condition like the bishop just said, pray three times a day. Pray three times a day. Let's tell you in our Ezekiel, woe unto them that go down to Egypt. Because they have horses, they have this, they have everything. Some of you, that's your mindset. Before you think, you know, let me take my problem to the most high. You'll lie or go to the other nations or to the heathen or to another God. So that's what the bishop is trying to instill in you. It's our acknowledgement and our worship of our Father which art in heaven. I hope y'all get that. I hope y'all do. Get that. Matthew 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So they got their reward, Christ said, praying in the street to be seen like the prayer. What's that thing called? The prayer with these Edomites, like in Brooklyn. The prayer of, what's a red tent? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about? A prayer station. Prayer station. Prayer station. Right. Yeah. Them dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Read on. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Come on. And when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. I remember at the old school, we used to pray vain repetition. We used to have the four corners prayer. We would say a prayer towards the, towards the east, the same prayer towards the west, then we'd pray towards the north and the south. It was the same prayer. We did that every Sabbath. That's vain repetition. Bishop, like the Lord wouldn't hear us. Wasn't there a prayer that I think Ari used, Ari Ari used to say for money? Yes, there was a money prayer. There was a, a, a prayer about uh, evil women yes. who won't give us no butt. <laughs> <laughs> the booty prayer. <laughs> I tell you, I have no idea. Okay, where we at? Uh, verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Mm -hmm. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Mm -hmm. After this manner therefore pray ye, our father, which art in heaven. So you acknowledge the father. Go ahead. Which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallowed be thy name. You ex you exclaim that his name is holy. Go ahead. Thy kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. So when you said thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, you're saying you want these kingdoms to fall and you want the Lord's kingdom to come. Okay? As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And make us content. Okay? And forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us what we owe you, Lord. As we forgive our debts. We forgive those who have sinned or trespassed against us. Okay? And lead us not into temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from evil. So that lead us not into temptation. Why? Because Satan's going to come through one of those doors, those 13 or 23 doors. Okay? For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. So we discussed prayer here. Now look at 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So Christ instructed us on prayer and fasting, which goes right back to what we read early in Mark 9, 29, please. We read it a few minutes ago. This is exactly what he said about certain demons that we have. The book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 29. Verse 29. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fast. So for these certain demons to come out, we got to He instructed us on how to pray and how to fast. Give me um, Isaiah 26 and 3. 
This is for y'all that, that may be on medication, mental medication, psychosis. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26, and verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. This is why we say study, pray, apply. The Lord said he will keep you in perfect peace, peace of mind, if your mind is stayed on him. Remember what we read earlier? Hey, show me the opposite. Hold that, uh, Zakai. Give me the one we read earlier. In Wisdom of Solomon, uh, it's either chapter 4 or chapter 9, it says, The mind amuses upon many things. 915, thank you. Then we're going to go read Isaiah. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 15. Come on. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. So this flesh we got presses down our soul. Go ahead. And the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that muses upon many things. This earthly tabernacle does what? Muse. Earthy tap weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Your mind is everywhere. Concupiscence, lasciviousness, adultery, stealing, theft. Your mind is not to be musing on everything. Go back to Isaiah 26 and 3 now. The book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So our mind... And, and that takes time. That's not something you can say overnight and say, hey, my mind is 100% of the Lord. That's a lie. Our mind goes everywhere. Soon as we look through the room, I'm, I'm like, now nah, I can see the room. My mind, I see a green jacket. I see a brother with a hand on his chin. My mind goes everywhere. But to stay focused takes uh, practice and patience. Everybody understand that? It don't come like that. That's why Christ said about Peter, when you're converted, strengthen your brother. It takes time. It takes years. It does not happen like that. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. 2 Timothy 1.7. I'm still dealing with you psychotic men and women who need white man therapy. If you need white man therapy, fine. Because you have, like I said, the Bible helps those with uh, faith. If you have very little faith or no faith, the Bible, the words of the Bible ain't going to help you. Because you don't believe. Read that. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love, and of a sound mind. You see that sound mind part? That's what I wanted. God didn't make us crazy. The, 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 our mind musing everywhere, we may uh, suffer from certain uh, psychotic aneurysms or whatever the terminology is. I'm not a doctor. Go to get medication. Or if it's not there yet, sometimes you can use herbs. If it's in the early stages, you can't wait till you cuckoo for Cocoa Pups and say, I'm going to use herbs now. It doesn't work like that. Herbs are preventative. Okay. What is it? Not um. Not... after you already got it. Right. right. The herb ain't going to help you. Right. Not a cure. You know, am I saying it right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't wait. You can't no, wait till you. S- what? <laughs> yeah. You can't wait till you're you sick to start using herbs. Right. You have to be you gotta, proactive, you, yeah, not reactive. It. You don't react after the fact. Okay, the herbs are not going to set in and start healing you after all the damage you've done. The herbs are preventative, okay, like stuff that filter out your blood, that open your arteries, that prevent plaquing from the brain, okay? There's stuff that God created to stop these things from ever happening. So some of you, you break your body down to the point where it's toxic, it's weak, it can't uh, perform or uh, function according to the way you, the God designed it, and then you want to start popping bill, pills and taking herbs and taking medication. You never fix the problem. And that's what you have to do when you deal with holistic healing. Okay? There's a lot of stuff that Esau is capitalizing on us because we let things go too far, like your mental health. If you eat, and if your diet is cookies and cake and ice cream, no uh, lettuce, no tomatoes, no ginger, no uh, thyme, no cumin, no none of those things that are of the earth, then you go to the doctor and they give you a, a, a grim prognosis. Now all of a sudden you start taking this stuff, you already destroyed your body. I watched my mother when they told her in the beginning of her uh uh, pancreatic cancer, another doctor told her, look, this is you can fix this. A white man told her, nope, you're going to die within such and such years. Okay? They told her, change your diet, stop eating Chinese food, stop going here, stop doing that. She said, well, I'm going to enjoy my life. That's how some people think. You don't care about yourself to that point to do things that are preventative, so you'll get the prognosis and you'll just eat yourself to death. And that's what the bishop is trying to explain. 
Be proactive, not reactive. Reacting after the fact, you got bad news. Exactly. So if it's if it's too late, brothers or sisters, you brothers, when y'all talking to these women, ask them: Are they do they need medication? Are they on medication? I'm telling y'all, we had some horror stories with women that hold it in and they. Yeah, shalom, brother. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, these women, is, some of these sisters are crazy. Hey, I saw a brother. He messed with a, this sister. She was, um, she dealt with some things in the past. I think she had PSD or some some medication she was on. And the but and she hit it. And after the, the brother, the whole life changed, Bishop. You know, whatever, de- whatever demon she had on her, they both became one. And the brother whole spirit changed. He was never the same after that. You know, when he wanted to have sex with her, she cried. <laughs> you know, she's like, yo, this was a messed up marriage. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's, so, it's so bad that the sister even regressed. Mm-hmm. Went back to her lesbianism, to her mm-hmm. filth. So we're saying, when you see, you, you got to find out, you want to marry these some of these sisters, you got to find out they pass. You got to find out if they got any crazy if they're on medication for, for um for PSD or whatever it is, post we call it post post traumatic stress post traumatic stress. You know, I was raped when I was nine years old. You know, and I still deal with that. You know, brother touches wife, she like, oh, <laughs> I'm telling you crazy stuff like that. So y'all be careful, man. That's right. So uh, understand. Um, ask the necessary questions. You got to ask these questions. And if you need white man's therapy, go get it. You brothers that's dealing with rape spirits, go get the help. If the Bible can't help you because you don't believe, go get the help you need. Okay, we'll pray with you. We'll fast with you. But sometimes you brothers, you don't really believe. And we're wasting our time with you. Okay? So if you decide to disobey, you'll be overcome by satanic sin. Give me Matthew 12, 45. We're almost done. We talked about... uh, 13 spirits. Watch what Christ said about this in Matthew 12, 45. Watch the book of Matthew, said. chapter 12 and verse 45. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven... Well, read up- above it. I'm, I, start of, I want to start above it. Yeah. Uh, Where the beginning it is. 43? Yes. The no, book of Ma- yeah, 43. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is going out of a man... So an unclean spirit is you battling there may be one major demon you got. That's been your hold up, your hang up all your life. Now you come in this truth, you repent, that demon leaves. Go ahead. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Mm. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Meaning you. Go ahead. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. So this demon that left you, now he comes back to pay you a visit. Okay, like if it's spirit of adultery or spirit of murder or stealing. He comes back and he sees that your mind is empty, swept, and garnished. Your mind, it's like when you go to a, a house opening or apartment opening, and it's all nice, like nobody had ever lived there. But it's not supposed to look like that. Give me that precept in Revelation 3, 20. Watch this. Here's the precept for that. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Christ is supposed to be in your mind. See that? It's not supposed to be empty like we just go back to Matthew 12 and 44. The Lord is supposed to be in your mind. The demon is supposed to see the Lord in your spirit, in your mind. Read that again, verse 44. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 44. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Read. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now remember, you're already at 13. Now that one leaves, comes back and says, you know what? Christ ain't in here. Let me get seven more and come back. That's what happens. Read that again. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Y'all see that? So 13 and seven is how many? Damn. 
You ain't at the sodomite level yet, but it's still close. It's close. From there, give me 2nd Ezra 1674. We're almost done. So again, right now I'm discussing if you decide to disobey, you will be overcome by Satan. So we gave you how to overcome. We went to Mark 9, 29, Psalms 55, 17, Matthew 6, 5 to 13, Isaiah 26, 3, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, how to overcome. Now we're dealing with if you decide to disobey, you will be overcome. We went to Matthew 12, 45, Revelation 3, 20. Now we're in 2 Ezra 16, 74 to 78. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16, verse 74. Here. O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Mm. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is, in, is your God. God is our God. Come on. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. He's only the guide of them that keep his commandments. Come on. And precepts, mm -hmm. saith the Lord God. Watch this. Let not your sins weigh you down. Sometimes we got sins that trouble us. We're not acting on them. They trouble us. It says, don't let that weigh you down. I ain't nobody. I can't do it. No, don't get that. Don't let that depressed spirit get on you. You can overcome. Okay, understand that thing. Read that part again. Let not your sins weigh you down. Go ahead. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Now it says, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, meaning I'm going to meddle in it. I'm going to just touch it one more again. It said, don't do that. We don't. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Because if you let your iniquities lift up themselves, you're going to get bound. Meaning like rope all around you, your sins is going to do that to you. Read that again, 77. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins mm -hmm. and covered with their iniquities. And covered with iniquities. What is it like? Like as a field is covered over with bushes. It's like you're walking in a field and there's bushes all over. There's no path for you to clearly see for you to walk. So you stepping on bushes and all that. Go ahead. And the path thereof covered with thorns mm -hmm. that no man may travel through. No man can travel a path because it's covered with thorns and bushes. That's how you are covered with your sins. Go ahead. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. You see that? When it says it is left undressed, to be dressed means it's supposed to be trimmed and a path cleared. But none of that was done. It was not dressed. So now it says is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So that's for you brothers and sisters that decide you will not obey the steps that we have shared with you on how to overcome. First Peter 2 and 8. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 8. And a stone of stumbling. Christ is a stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense. He's a rock of offense to those that reject him. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them that stumble at the scriptures. Go ahead, watch this. Being disobedient. Here it comes. Whereunto also they were appointed. Some people were appointed to stumble in the scriptures. To never understand. That's their lot from the time of Genesis chapter 6. They add, many times as they come back, their lot is to never understand. Okay? From there, give me 2 Peter 2.20. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's all of you men and women listening right now. You have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. They are again entangled. And therein. then once again, you get caught up again. You caught right back up in the sin you escaped from. Read it again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. And what? And overcome. Overcome is what we just read in Esdras. Your sins have bound you because you played with it. You kept playing, dabbling over and over. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to see me. Now you're in a, a situation you can't overcome. Your, you can't overcome this now. Go ahead. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You was wor you're worse now than when you first came in. That's what Peter's saying in the spirit of Christ. You're worse now because you dabbled, meddled, and played with sin. Go ahead. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You see what you did? You turned from the holy commandment. You said, nah, I saw the steps on how to overcome. I got this. I'm good. I don't need the, what they said in the scriptures. I can do this. Now you overcome. Your sins have got you. Don't play with Satan. He's an age-old demon. 
How old are you? 40 years old? Satan was created from the very beginning. Here you go. I could beat him. Yeah, okay. Okay. Keep going. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Yeah. And right. the soul that was washed and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mind. So you're like the dog that turns to his vomit. Dog will vomit, then go back and lap it up. Then it says, and the soul, that means pig, that was washed. You wash the pig. She returns to her wallowing in the mire. That means mud. So that's some of you, men and women in here. I pray not, but I see what I see. Revelation 14, 12. Now, the final analysis of all that we went over today, how to overcome by keeping the commandments. Overcoming by keeping the commandments. Revelation 14, 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These are keys to overcoming what I'm sharing with you. Revelation 22, 14 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read that again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed, 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 blessed are they that do his commandments. This is something we got to meditate, practice, and apply. Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life mm -hmm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. I don't know about y'all, but I want rights to the tree of life and I want to enter New Jerusalem. I want to be able to walk through the gates of New Jerusalem. That's how all our mindset should be. First John 5 and 4, please. We're almost done. The book of first John chapter five and verse four mm -hmm. for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world to be born of God means to be born again. You have changed whole lot. Let me give you an easy scripture. Uh, Romans 12. Is it two about be transformed? I want that one. Romans 12. It's like the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse two. This is what it means to be born of God and be not conformed to this world. Don't be con conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to those 13 demons you got. Why? Because those 13 demons are glorified in society. Don't conform to that. Go ahead. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need a new mentality. I remember Patti LaBelle did a song, I got a new attitude. You gotta change the way you think, the way you dress, all of that. You must change, we must change, okay? You used to walk around with your pants under your butt. Change that, be transformed. You used to look at women like they're bitches and hoes. Change that way of thinking. These are your wives, sisters, mothers, daughters. Change the way you think. Everybody understand that? Read that again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God. You know how you prove that the, this Bible is true? When people watch you, they're going to say, yo, he changed. He did a whole 180. Is it 180? 180. One, he, he changed his whole life. This dude was a no good vagabond, a bum. Never had a job. Hated his wife. Hated his kids. Now look at him. Wow. He's giving scriptures. He's, he's helping the kids in the community. Look what he's doing. Wow. Loving wife now. Wow. This is this is something to what he's into. That Read it again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that? That's how you prove that thing right there. That's how you prove it. Hey, give me the one in Ephesians real quick. Uh, uh, I'm not Ephesians. I'm sorry. Second Ezra 14, the one that says, subdue your own thoughts. Yeah, give me that one. I ain't got it written down. I just thought about it. And then, then I want Ephesians 4.23. All right. The book of Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding. Your understanding involves sex, drugs, and rap music. That's your understanding. The Bible says subdue that way of thinking, good? And reform your hearts. The re reform means transform. Transform your minds. Transform the way you think. And that takes time, brother. That takes time, sister, good? You shall be kept alive. You shall be kept alive. That means you're going to get eternal life. That's what that means. Go ahead. And after death, you and shall. And after death, 
ye shall obtain mercy. Right, because that because this body is meant to die. Right. This body is meant to be done away with. Okay, Ephesians four twenty three. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what we all got to do. Be renewed in the spirit of our minds. It takes time. It takes years. It takes study, prayer, and application. Study, prayer, and application. From there, we're almost done. I keep saying it. Revelation, um, 1 John 5 and 4 again. I'm sorry. We're almost done. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So if you're born of God, meaning born again, you've transformed your way of thinking, you've renewed your mind, it says you overcome the world. Read it again. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Uh -huh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Go ahead. Even our faith. Indeed our faith. Read. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the only way you can overcome, brother. Whatever you're struggling with, you must believe that Christ is the Son of God. You must transform your way of thinking. That's the only way you overcome. What verse was that? That was verse 5. You finished it? Yes. All right, from there, give me Revelation 3, 5. I'm sorry, Revelation 2, 7. I'm sorry. 2, 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear. If you have a mind to understand, listen good. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. There's a benefit to overcoming. There's a benefit to transforming the way you think. There's a benefit for renewing your mind. Go ahead. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. We'll go over that another lesson. Not today, though. Jump down to verse 11, just for time's sake. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. The churches are the churches of the Israelites, the assemblies of Israel, okay? He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. And I'm sure other deacons and the bishop have gone over this with y'all before. The second death is what's mentioned in Revelation uh, 20. When a father comes on the scene and every soul that ever existed is judged, except those that have part in the first resurrection. We don't have to fear that, okay? From there, jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. Will I give to eat of the hidden man. The hidden food. Go ahead. And will Meaning give, hidden wisdom. That's what that's going into. Go ahead. And will give him a white stone. And he will give you a white stone. Watch this. And in the stone, a new name he's, written. He's going to give you a new name written. Go ahead. Which no man knoweth. Saving he that receiveth. All the names we be arguing about, he said, listen, you got a name that only the Lord knows. He going, this is your name. <laughs> your name that was from the beginning. Okay. I thought my name was uh, 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 Rashida or Ray Ray or Poop. That ain't your name. The hell is this? From there, jump down to verse 26. Verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth, keepeth my works. And he unto that them. overcometh and keepeth my works. Real quick, let's get the works. Second Ezra 724. We're coming right back, Zakai. We're coming right back. I just want to explain the works. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 7, and verse 24. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. See that? So the works of the Lord is his commandments, his laws, his covenants. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Yes, Let's go back now to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 26 again. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. Which is the, the commandments. Go ahead. Unto the end. You see that part? Unto the end. Meaning until you die. Or the Lord return, whichever one come first. You keep the commandments till the end. Go ahead. To him will I give power over the nations. To him will I give power over the nations. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. All right. From there, real quick, Revelation 3, 5. 3, 5. I'm almost done. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. See, I don't know about y'all, but I want this thing right there. He that overcometh, we must overcome the demons we have within. We must overcome this world. Jump down to verse 12, please. Verse 12. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar 
in the temple of my God. To be a pillar in the temple means you are a leader because a leader upholds the building. That's what you will be, a leader. Go ahead. And he shall go no more out. You ain't going to go out into captivity no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God mm -hmm. and the name of the city of my God, mm -hmm. which is New Jerusalem, right? which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He said, I got a new name. Y'all arguing about, is it Yahweh Shah? Is it Yahshua? He said, I got a new name. I'm going to give you what you fighting about, Negroes. Wake up. Well, I'm going to argue with you about the name. Shut up. From there, what verse was that? That was 12. That was 12. Jump down to 21. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Remember the brothers asked, the mother asked Christ, can right. one son sit on your right hand and one sit on your left? He said, that's not for me to give. That's to the father. He gives that. Yeah. But watch what it says here. Verse 21 again. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, mm. even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. That's some heavy stuff right there. Uh, First Maccabees 261. I'm rushing now because almost done. First Maccabees 261. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, and verse 61. And thus consider ye throughout all ages, that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. See that? None that put their trust in the Lord shall be overcome. You brothers and sisters must believe that. There's nobody in ages who ever put their trust in the Lord and was overcome. We must believe that thing. Last scripture, 2 Ezra 6.28. The book of Ezra chapter 6 and verse 28. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. See that? Corruption is destined to be overcome. Go ahead. And the truth. And the truth. God's laws. Which have been so long without fruit. Which have been so long on this earth without fruit. Shall be declared. Shall be declared. All right, brothers. So with that, who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. All praises. With that, we say shalom. Oh, I forgot. There was one more from Feast of Tabernacles. Put that up. Feast. I forgot. Uh, no. The two, the buckets. This is from Rochester. They sent this to me. There was two, right? So there was a bucket here for the cleanup crew. Do you have the words there? I sent the words. I want the words so y'all know it ain't me. I want the words. Put the words up there. What do you mean there's no words? I'm looking at the words. I'm looking at the words on the IUIC thing. Right under the bucket, right under, right there. You mean there's no words? I'm looking at the words. Read it. I want y'all to see that this ain't me because I, I know you Bishop, I was making things up and lie. I don't be lying. I'm telling y'all the truth. Some of y'all ain't right. Go ahead, read that thing right there. Blow the big, bro. So small. All right. Go ahead, read that. Shalom, Bishop. Here's one for you. At the conclusion of Feast of Tabernacle, prior to departing the field, two different sisters left buckets behind for the cleanup crew to stumble upon. These buckets contained urine, feces, and menstrual waste. I have been informed of who these two sisters are. Ironically, they are both single sisters who are currently proving. See that? You see you brother see that thing? Y'all see that some nasty stuff? They proven. It might be one of y'all sitting up in here with a nasty sum of anyway. Go ahead, Asaph. What we got? These people are nasty. I tell y'all, yeah. <laughs> so once again, once again, oh, how many of y'all enjoy Feast of Tabernacles? How many of did not go to Feast of Tabernacle? Show your hands. So we're going to see y'all next year, right? Yes, sir. Y'all going to be ready next year. Next year, we're going to do it bigger and better to the letter. All right, we got any announcements? Hey, hold on. Let me read this one scripture right here. Deuteronomy 23 and 13. No. Remember, Feast of Tabernacles is when we came out of Egypt, we was dwelling in boots, right? No, when we was dwelling, when we came out and we was in the wilderness and we was dwelling in boots... The, don't think what we dealing with right now, Moses didn't have to deal with the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna show you all. Now, um, you know what I mean? 23 and, yeah. and 2 and 13. 13, 13, sorry. 
The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 13. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon. And it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad. When you take in a dump, read on. Thou shalt dig therewith. You got to dig a hole, read on. And shall turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. And <laughs> cover the doodle up, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was the Lord. The Lord had to, Moses had to let the people know when you take a crap, dig a hole and cover it up. Damn. Cleansiness, cleansiness. Hey, but watch so, this. Oh. Why did he have to give us those instructions? But niggas Who knows why he had to give us those instructions? Your hand went up. Because we were doing that in Egypt. Not, not that. What did he tell us about when we come, uh, uh, when we leave Egypt and we go around the other nations not to do after their works? There's a beach right now where Hamites dwell, a beautiful beach where a photographer went through there, a reporter went through, and there's crap all along the beach. It's disgusting. Can you bring that picture up? That's normal in some people's minds. Okay, just just Google it. Uh, beach with uh, feces. It's nice white sand. And the people just go right there and they just dump right there. They've contaminated the beach. It's where Ham is. I forgot. I forgot which. Was it Liberia? And the people just go, men, women, children, everything. They just go right there and just dump on the beach. That, that, man, I wish I could find the actual uh, documentary. But the white man was telling them, look, this land is beautiful and you're destroying it. And the guy was like, look, we're trying to explain it to them, but that's their culture. Their culture is you just doodle right there and not cover it. So that's why Moses said, look, y'all don't be like them Hamite nations. You bring a paddle with you, and when you take a dump, you dig a hole and you cover it. Read the whole thing. Watch this, what it says. This is what happens if you think not to do that. Read the scripture again. You left off one thing. Right, right. and the reason why, because ain't nobody want to smell and see your, your doodle. Malachi, yeah. is, it's going to get deeper than that. Watch yeah. this. For you sisters that think that was normal to leave your crap lying around, your blood and all that other waste, watch what the scripture says. Read on. Verse 14. For the Lord Read thy the whole God. thing. Watch this. Right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 13. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back, and cover that which cometh from thee. This is why he said to cover it. Read on. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. So that the angels, the spirit of God does not see your filth. Mm. He's in the midst of your camp to do what? To deliver thee. To deliver you from the enemy. So if you're filthy and you're nasty, the spirit will depart. Read on. And to give up thine enemies before thee. Watch this. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee. Some of you women think it's normal to just take a dump and leave it there and walk away from it. Because the spirit of God is not in you. You're mentally and spiritually nasty. And you, you'll destroy the whole camp with that behavior, with that nasty mindset. That's why a lot of y'all, y'all hear the scriptures, y'all come here, y'all put the fringes on. Most high in Christ bless, but you still have filthy souls. Yo, Dick, you know what that proves? You know, they always it have this saying that cleanliness is next to godliness. This is what this right here proves. Right. Because it's saying in order for the most high to fight and to defend us, we got to be holy. We got to be, and, and he's telling you what he's talking about. Don't be crapping all over the place and doing nasty stuff. You what know what I mean? Way? Keep yourself cleansy. You know what I mean? If you want the angels to dwell amongst you and fight for you, you know, be holy. And part of being holy is not shitting all over the place and leaving it, you know. <laughs> hey, where well, I work, uh, Deacon, there was a, a Edomite lady. They came to her apartment to do work. And she told the service guy, you got to take your shoes off before you come in here. He takes his shoes off and this dog doodle all over the carpet. So they called us. There was like the dude was like, yo, I'm not doing the work. This woman told me to take my shoes off before I come in there. But her dog crapped all over the carpet, different piles everywhere. That's how sick people's minds are. The dog doodle is fine, but you with your dirty shoes from the street, don't bring it in here. That's how sick people's minds are. And I'm sorry to say we just gave proof. A lot of y'all need to get your mind right. You sick in the head. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.